When you create, curate, and distribute compelling content, you'll get searched by more of the right people. Let's talk about how content marketing can work for you. Just go to thepulsenetwork.com slash herald. That's thepulsenetwork.com slash herald to learn more. Boston Herald Radio. Call or text with your opinion at 617-286-8818. First, there was the hitman, Johnny Moderano, then the rifleman, Stevie Flemmy. But no one terrorized the city of Boston for over two decades like James J. Whitey Bulger, or as I call him in my new book about his trial, Rat Man. For years, Whitey would glare at me as I drove past the South Boston Liquor Mart, making it clear that I was on his bleep list. By the time he was arrested in 2011, it was well established that he was just a big, fat, rat. And now it's my turn to glare at him, even though the prolific snitch did everything he could to keep me out of the courtroom last summer. Ratman is my record of the Whitey Bulger trial, complete with never-before-heard witness testimony and shocking photographs of some of Bulger's grisly handiwork. You'll also get some priceless play-by-play of the Ratman himself lashing out at former associates in the courtroom. Get your edition of Ratman today. It's as easy as going to HowieCarshow.com or to your local bookstore. One more thing, Whitey always said that Christmas is for cops and kids. Prove him wrong by picking up a copy of Ratman today as a present for the avid reader in your household this Christmas. It's Ratman, the trial and conviction of Whitey Bulger. Buy online at HowieCarshow.com or in fine bookstores everywhere. Ratman. As one of the Boston Herald's weekly blog contributors, Rafi Salon and Day Spa is best known for our highly talented staff and comfortable, eco-friendly atmosphere. We are a full-service salon located on Newbury Street, offering hair, skin, nail, and makeup services while being respectful of the earth and leading the way as Boston's first eco-friendly salon. Our passion for curly hair and natural texture has made us Boston's curly-haired experts and the only WeDod certified salon in the area. We are dedicated to making you look and feel your very best. Todd Pressman here in the Boston Herald web desk. Running down our top commented stories today, readers are piling into the headline, Ryan Hannigan might catch on with the Red Sox. A story of what the team is doing at the catcher position, where free agent Jared Saltalamacchia is looking for a three-year contract, one the Red Sox might not be willing to sign. Reporter Scott Lauber says that Cincinnati Reds catcher Ryan Hannigan fits the profile of what the Sox are seeking, a defense-oriented stopgap to play 90-100 to 100 games next season in tandem with veteran backup David Ross, while strong-armed 23-year-old Christian Vasquez continues to mature at AAA. Albert also points out that Hannigan grew up in Andover and was teammate with Ross for parts of two seasons in Cincinnati, where he played an average of 88 games in 2009. Mongo Melty had this to say on the speculation. Hannigan would be a huge defensive upgrade over Salty. I think his career caught stealing percentage is over 40%. The question is, can he start hitting again like he used to? And in response to the Herald's report on evaluations of Boston public school teachers and criticism by the teachers' union that the review was discriminatory and biased, Screaming Eagle commented, When you have some third-year teachers who go off to the principal program reviewing 30-year veterans, you're going to have some age bias. It's not the teachers, it's the kids and their lack of parental support. For the latest on these and other stories, go to bostonherald.com, check out our free sports and news apps, or pick up a copy of today's Herald. I'm Todd Pressman, and that's the Boston Herald Web Traffic Report. Locally overnight in Boston, skies will cloud up. Temperatures in the 30s and low 40s. Warmest weather downtown. And tomorrow, a lot of clouds to end your work week. There could be a sprinkle or a shower. No big deal. It'll be mild. Upper 40s, low 50s. Saturday, mostly cloudy, becoming windy. We'll start in the mid-40s. Flurries, snow squalls will knock temperatures down by dark. Then very strong northwest winds and bitter cold air for Saturday night and Sunday. Gear up. For more weather, go to heraldweather.com. For Boston Herald Radio, I'm Mark Resenthal. Now it's time for Sports Town with John Mita Perel and Jen Royal. Jen Royal here for Sports Town, Boston Herald Radio, flying solo for the first hour. 
And then actually, maybe Shattuck, you can give me a little bit of a back of background information on my co-host from four to six. He's apparently he is a um, <laughs> rising star. <laughs> I don't know. I've met him a couple of times. He seems to know what he's doing. He's a good-looking guy, though, Jen. You like him? I heard, but I heard he's married with three kids, so I have to what? keep my paws off of him. Oh, I man. know. So disappointing. That's and ridiculous. And he's bald. Meter knows I love bald men, but he is meters. What is this liking bald men crap? I don't know. I just think it's sexy. It's like the one thing I have. In my, hair. Yeah, that's all I have. The only yeah, thing I can check like off. we like hair. We like bald guys. This is bold belief that they changed the game right as I was coming into bald it. Bald guys, tattoos, smoke cigarettes, but not to the point where they could potentially die of cancer. You need to work in a Guitar prison. Guitar play. I can't believe you just said that. Yeah. That is my dream job besides to be a chef is to be a warden. Well, yeah. Do you believe that? I want to be a warden. You know, if, you're, if that's your thing. Is that crazy? Then you would have your pick of... I want to be a warden. Yeah. I want to visit prisons. You know I have this obsession with serial prison. killers. <laughs> what? I want to work in a prison. Well, there's some really a prison good... or a kitchen. How about a kitchen in a you prison? You know who you would have liked is Ted Bundy. He was I didn't clat- love Ted Bundy. Um, mm-hmm. I'll tell you why. Ted Bundy scared me a little bit. because really? Was it the killing? No. Well, Ted Bundy only killed brunettes who parted their hair down the middle and had straight hair. Isn't that you? Um, no. Well, I go a little off to the side and I have a little bit of wave. So I think I would, he'd make the exception. For I it. would not. <laughs> God, I hope so. <laughs> I would not be on Ted Bundy's radar. Um, what freaked me out about Ted Bundy was that he drove a white beetle or a bug. What are they called? Yeah, a bug. Yeah. Uh, he only killed women with brunettes uh, parted down the middle and straight hair. Now, Ted Bundy, this is why he scared me. He was too smart for his own good. He was a lawyer. He represented himself in his court case. Yeah. Little freaky. Yeah, I think there's something wrong with him. So now that may, <laughs> you think? So now that may, when, when I was watching, you know, all these documentaries on Ted Bundy, then I started to realize that now nerds and really smart, weird people could yeah. be serial killers. Definitely. Well, aren't most of them? Um, it, three out of four IT guys has killed a man. There's no doubt. Potentially. Potentially. I don't think that Jeffrey Dahmer was that smart. Is he an IT guy? Is he a nerd? No. He worked in a, like a food plant. Uh, I don't know. There yes, you go. Yes. Uh, and of course, we all know that he ate people. Yeah. Uh, I thought I actually watched a documentary on him the other day, which I've seen a thousand of them. I thought he got killed in prison because someone shoved a broomstick in his stomach. Yeah, well. But no. I eventually heard, in his stomach. I heard yesterday that he got hit over the head with a barbell in the gym. So I don't know. I don't think so. I think the broomstick. Although. Might not have been him. You know, there was a spate of killings in, uh, in that time, <laughs> so like these, in the late 90s, where they were whacking everybody. If you are, I don't know so much about Ted Bundy, but if you're a sicko like Jeffrey Dahmer, you have no chance of making it in prison. No chance. Which, who, Paterno? No, not Paterno. Um, Sandusky. Uh, Sandusky. Is he not dead? No. How is he not dead? They, they, have him in a, they must have him in a safe place in prison that people can't get to him. I would say so. I would say so. I think that... I uh, thought he would have been dead by now. I, I, they've got to keep him, obviously, away from people because those they don't do well in prison, and especially he's somebody... With children. Yeah, I mean, yep. he's not in federal prison either, so he's local, I don't know why right? he's not dead yet. And I don't know why we're not talking sports. We're talking about serial Oh, Sandusky. He's this sports. Is, yeah, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think people are very comfortable hearing about child molesters. Um, but anyway, that's why I'm a freak and I'm weird. And some of you love me and some of you hate me. Somebody actually tweeted me the other day and he said, sometimes I absolutely hate things you say. And sometimes I absolutely love things you say. So you're doing something right. So there's no gray area. You are doing something night. You, uh, night. I don't, know, I don't know what I'm doing. All I do know is that I just had a massive steak and cheese sub from Dino's. And if anybody knows Dino's, they know this. Their subs are 16 inches. That's fantastic. Where, where are they? It's in the North End. It's across the street from my house. And most people get a 16-inch sub, and they share it. That's eight inches a person. Yeah. That is more than enough. That's a lot of sub, definitely. Oh, yeah. Your friend Jen just ate the whole thing in the kitchen. 
The whole thing. That's why you're the, m- maybe the greatest woman on the face of the earth. The whole thing. But here's the that, that's mayonnaise. fantastic in mayonnaise. Doused in mayonnaise, extra cheese and mayonnaise. I just ate the whole thing. The whole. God, I, you thing. know what? I, I, you know, I'm I'm married. <laughs> yes. But I love you. <laughs> I love you. Too, and I don't Chad. care. You know, I'm willing to cast off <laughs> yep. kids, wife, the, the whole thing. Any the whole woman thing. who kills a huge steak and cheese. I did with mayo. Do you yeah. realize that somebody like Joe Battenfeld right now uh, on his sick bed would never eat a, a steak and cheese sub then alone? You know what? Then he hasn't lived. Then yeah. he's, he's being cheated no, either in, in life. No, in, either Hillary and, uh, and Jacqueline would never eat He's to, being eat cheated like in that. life. But I, I'm, I am going to rationalize it. I didn't have breakfast. It. I didn't have breakfast and I'm not having dinner. You could have had seven. Imagine that. I no, could, you. Wait, you, really? Yeah. You am I okay? Of course you're okay. If I don't eat for the rest of the day, am I okay? No, you should have a late night meal. Get buzzed and eat late night. That's <laughs> no, what I like to do. Yes. No, not happening. That was what happened last night, which is why I ate the steak and cheese today. Okay, okay that was medicinal steak and cheese. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I don't even think I needed it. I actually feel great today, which is unusual. My friend now, however, feels like crap, and he's a dude. So that just goes to show I can handle my alcohol more than him. So anyway, uh, besides talking about serial killers and food, we are going to talk about sports. At 3.15, we're going to be joined by Scott Lauber, who wrote a very interesting column in today's Herald talking about the possibility of Ryan Hannigan, a 33-year-old catcher from the Cincinnati Reds, coming over to the Red Sox via trade. Uh, He's owed $3 million through salary arbitration. Uh, It's safe to say after free agency next year that this is the year that the Cincinnati Reds want to dump him. Uh, I'm not sure. Again, we'll talk to Scott Lauber about this. The Red Sox need a big hot shot catcher like Brian McCann because they have a guy in David Ross, at least for next year, that can catch 60 games. You know, I think that David Ross made quite a name for himself in the World Series given the fact that he caught the past few games over Jared Salta La Macchia. He's a leader in the clubhouse. He is a veteran behind the plate. He's not that bad of a hitter. Listen, your backup catchers never are great hitters. Uh, it could be a lot worse. You could look at the John Flaherty's, who were the bat, you know, the backup catcher for the Yankees. He batted about a hundred at times, um, and was a personal catcher for Randy Johnson. So you know, every time Randy Johnson took the mound in New York, he was going to have Ryan Flaherty behind there, and you knew Ryan Flaherty was not going to get a hit. I'm sorry, John Flaherty. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm thinking of Ryan Flaherty from the Orioles. But John Flaherty, also known as Flash, who is now a broadcaster for the Yes Network. So if you look at the backup option of David Ross, it's really not bad at all. Uh, so again, I'm not sure you need a huge hotshot catcher, someone like Brian McCann, who's going to be looking for a long-term deal uh, about five years. And let me tell you, the Red Sox aren't going there. And we talked about this yesterday with Chris Villani. The Red Sox are not going to go to five years, I don't think, with anybody. Why would they get away from their philosophy that worked so well last year of not signing anybody to more than a three-year deal. I don't see them going to five with anybody. In fact, I don't even know who they're going to three with unless they give Napoli three years. You know what? I've been tweeting about the fact that they need to give Napoli three years, and I'm not talking about guaranteed money, so I probably need to um, reevaluate my tweeting capabilities because Usually, anybody with injuries, you take a look at John Lackey who signed that six-year deal. It's now down to five because in his contract, if he were to go on DL or suffer any kind of arm injury, elbow, shoulder, whatever, that contract from six with him went down to five, and that's what they need to do or should do with with my family. If his condition or regeneration condition does seem to get worse, does get does get worse, and it's any time on DL. Turning the page on the Panthers game in that blown call. Yes, it was a blown 
phone call in the final seconds of Monday night's game against Carolina. We'll talk to Jeff Howe at 5.15, and we will start to talk about the Denver Broncos and whether or not we will see Wes Welker again at Gillette Stadium. This is Jim Royal for Boston Herald Radio. Back with you after this short break. Straight from the 40 seconds parallel in the heart of Boston. 02210 Boston Herald Radio. Are you looking for a great deal on a new Subaru? Metro West Subaru on Route 9 East in Natick is your place to find them. They have the all-new redesigned 2014 Foresters. They're available now. They also have 0% financing on all leftover models. Metro West Subaru has the largest pre-owned Subaru inventory in the Metro Boston area with over 30 certified Subarus in stock. Check them out today. You won't be disappointed. Do what I did. Check out Metro West Subaru, Route 9 East Natick, and as always, expect the best at Metro West. Boston Herald Radio. Call or text with your opinion at 617-286-8818. First there was the hitman, Johnny Moderano, then the rifleman, Stevie Fleming. But no one terrorized the city of Boston for over two decades like James J. Whitey Bulger. Or as I call him in my new book about his trial... Rat Man. For years, Whitey would glare at me as I drove past the South Boston Liquor Mart, making it clear that I was on his bleep list. By the time he was arrested in 2011, it was well established that he was just a big, fat rat. And now it's my turn to glare at him, even though the prolific snitch did everything he could to keep me out of the courtroom last summer. Rat Man is my record of the Whitey Bulger trial, complete with never-before-heard witness testimony and shocking photographs of some of Bulger's grisly handiwork. You'll also get some priceless play-by-play of the Rat Man himself lashing out at former associates in the courtroom. Get your edition of Rat Man today. It's as easy as going to HowieCarshow.com or to your local bookstore. One more thing, Whitey always said that Christmas is for cops and kids. Prove him wrong by picking up a copy of Rat Man today as a present for the avid reader in your household this Christmas. It's Rat Man, the trial and conviction of Whitey Bulger. Buy online at HowieCarshow.com or in fine bookstores everywhere. Rat Man. Right now at Sleepy's, get great Black Friday deals. Save up to 70% on every mattress in the store. With mattress sets starting at $199. Get a Beautyrest Queen set for just $499. And a free 32-inch HD TV with select models. Sleepy's, the mattress professionals. Making the world a better place to sleep. There's a list of people waiting to claim their share of over $2 billion in unclaimed property, like forgotten bank accounts, stock certificates, payroll and refund checks, or insurance proceeds. One in ten people have unclaimed property and don't even know it. Find out if you're on the list. Visit findmassmoney.com or call the Mass State Treasury 1-888-344-MASS. Find yours and claim your share. Morning Meeting with Jacqueline Cashman and Hilary Chabot. Everybody believed that this would be the time, after 20 years of Tom Menino, that maybe we would finally have a minority mayor, and it hasn't happened. We've gone through this preliminary election. There are two white Irish guys, and so Eugene Rivers, of course, wrote a great column today about why the minority community, which has a very strong voice and very prominent in Boston, uh, failed to get a member of their own community into the final two. Isn't it amazing? In 2013, with a black president and a black governor, how crazy is that? Yeah. In a majority minority city, the blacks wouldn't organize themselves to get one of two people. I think it's definitely a conversation we need to be having. Morning meeting. Nine to noon. On Boston Herald Radio. Boston Herald Radio. Real time. Relevant talk. Served to you straight with no chaser. Boston Herald Radio. What have you done now? Very interesting piece of information. Christian just handed me our little button boy. Cupcake face is what Meter calls him for some odd reason. We all know Meter is a very strange person. 
but I will talk about what Peter Gammons publicly said on Mike Lupica's show. Uh, Peter Gammons, who doesn't often stick his foot in his mouth, but he has this time. Um, until then, let's talk some Red Sox with our favorite Red Sox reporter. Yeah, I said it. He's our favorite. Not that John Tomasi guy. It's Scott Lauber. Scott, how are you? Hey, Jan. How are you? Three days in a row, bud. I love this. I know. Seriously. You might as well just make me a co-host here. I would love that, Scott. I would love that. But unfortunately, um, that's not my... my uh, that's the word I'm looking for. That's not my That's department. Above your pay grade? No, yeah, That's they above keep. Your pay grade? I come in and I don't even know who's sitting across from me. Some days it's very interesting. I don't even know some the guy coming no in today. The, there's somebody coming in at four. I don't know his name. I don't know what he does. I don't know what he looks like. So I'm sure it's going to well, be. Well, it just keeps it interesting. Exactly. It's going to be very, uh, very interesting to say the least. Okay, let's just start with your column today that I just finished reading on Ryan Hannigan, and I know that you touched base on this yesterday. For anybody listening, it's page 53 in the Herald. Check out Scott Lauber's column. Uh, I don't know if you agree with this. I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm not quite sure the Red Sox need a hot shot, expensive catcher to replace Jared Salt to the Monkey due to the fact that I think David Ross can catch 60 games and do a good job as a backup. What are your thoughts on that, and what do you think the chances are of Ryan Hannigan joining the Red Sox? Yeah, I tend to agree with you on that, Jen. I think that, you know, catcher is a position uh, where I think you can sacrifice a little bit of offense if need be. Uh, I think that they are more interested in having a guy back there who's really good defensively, like David Ross is. Ryan Hannigan would fit that bill. He's excellent defensive catcher and a guy who has one year left on his contract. So from a contractual standpoint, he would be the stopgap that they're kind of looking for to get them to Christian Vasquez, who would ultimately get them to Blake Swihart. So... You know, from a from a standpoint of years uh, 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 being responsible for uh, making that kind of a commitment, and also the kind of catcher that they're looking for, he might fit that profile. Again, he'd be kind of a buy low option, you would think, given that he came off a really really bad year uh, this year. But he has some sort of a track record uh, with with uh, Cincinnati. He's a good catcher, not a great catcher. He's not an all star, but maybe you don't need that. You know, maybe right. you need just a guy back there who's going to be a rock solid. Uh, defensive catcher who will bat ninth in your lineup, and and uh, you know maybe that's sort of the direction that they'll go in. If Sophomore insists on three years, we know that they don't want to go bet beyond two for him. So I think Hannigan's an option. Like I said uh, in the story today, uh, a lot of people expect that he'll be traded within the next month or so. Uh, once the dominoes begin to fall a little bit more, past Carlos Ruiz here, once Brian McCann finds a home, once AJ Pruszynski finds a home. Uh, if you're a team out there that needs a catcher and you're still looking around, Ryan Hannigan's going to look better and better to you, and, and the Red Sox could end up being that team. We'll see. Yeah, and speaking of Brian McCann, uh, my thoughts on that is the fact that, you know, here's a guy out there. He's starting to make his rounds. He wants to be courted by different teams. Five years he's looking for. I don't see, and I'm sure you agree with this, the Red Sox, why would they go away from their philosophy that worked so well last year of not uh, not giving anybody more than a three-year deal. is it, Could they even remotely consider someone like Brian McCann looking for five? The only way I could see them considering it is if, if Mike Napoli were to leave. And I think a lot of what's going to happen with the Red Sox this offseason hinges on Mike Napoli. If you can bring him back and put that power bat back in the middle of your lineup, uh, you can afford maybe to go a little light on the offense at catcher. Uh, you can afford to maybe uh, just sort of fill in your outfield here or there with more role players and more, uh, you know, uh, complementary type guys. But if you lose Mike Napoli from the middle of your lineup, you're going to need to make up that offense somewhere. We talked yesterday a little bit about Mike Carp and a little bit about Daniel Nava and how they can maybe share first base, but I don't know that you can sort of look at either of those guys and bank on them replacing the production you'll get out of Mike Napoli. And yeah. so maybe you've got to go offense bigger on offense at catcher if Napoli should leave. And that may be where the Red Sox interest in Brian McCann would would grow a little bit. But I think if they bring back Napoli, I think that they'll probably steer clear of McCann. Let the let the Rangers go five years. Let the Yankees go five years. Let another team that can afford uh, to go that long and then maybe turn him into a DH two or three years down the road, let them get in business with Brian McCann. I think the Red Sox interest in him right now is is probably uh, more keeping tabs, more seeing where the market goes, 
But if they find themselves in need of a bat in the middle of their lineup, McCann could be the guy, could be a guy that they look more seriously at. Now, speaking of Mike Napoli, let's just be honest here. There is a chance he doesn't return next year, correct? Lobber? Hello? Lobber? Lobber? Hello? Christian, yep. can you hear me? Scott, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear oh, okay. you now. Uh, let's just be honest. Taking a look at Mike Napoli, the fact that the Red Sox are looking talking to a Carlos Beltran, uh, you know, looking at other options at catch of first base, you know, just tell the audience that there is a chance Mike Napoli will not return to this ball club. Sure there's a chance. And, you know, I mean, last night my, my knee-jerk reaction after the Prince Fielder trade last night was, well, Texas is out, and, and that takes out one suitor. And I still believe Texas is probably out on Mike Napoli, although in rethinking it a little bit, in the hours since the trade, I mean, there is a scenario where they could sign Mike Napoli and make him sort of a first base DH split with Prince Fielder. He is a better first baseman mm -hmm. defensively than Prince Fielder, let's face it. Um, I just happen to think that the Rangers are going to spend their money and their resources to upgrade their outfield or add a catcher. I think those are more emergent needs for them than what Mike Napoli can give them, which is a part-time first baseman, part-time DH, uh, in a platoon with, uh, in a split with Prince Fielder. So I think they'll go in a different direction. I guess the door is not shut completely on Texas, going after Mike Napoli again, but I think it's reduced, and now Mike Napoli's looking at, I don't know, maybe Seattle, maybe the Mets. There are teams out there that could use a power hitter from the right side of the plate. We talked yesterday about how rare that is. But I, I do think his market decreases a little bit here and maybe improves the Red Sox chances of bringing him back on a, on a more team-friendly type yeah. of deal. We'll sort of see how the market plays now. But with the Rangers more than likely out of the picture for Mike Napoli, I think the chances are a little greater that you know, maybe he ends up back here. We know he likes it here, and we know the Red Sox can make him feel good with a three-year deal. I think that would probably do it. Uh, but we're just not sure they want to go that far. Yeah, I agree. Uh, talking to Scott Lauber here, beat reporter for the Red Sox at the Herald, uh, just sticking with Napoli, uh, also just from, from what a lot of people, again, don't understand in terms of contracts. We saw it with John Lackey. Hello, it doesn't, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Christian, can you hear me? Lauber? 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 Bueller? <laughs> Hello, yep. Can you hear me now? That's so weird. You keep, uh, yeah. you keep going in and out. That's so strange. Strange. Did you get my? Did you get the whole last answer there? Or did <laughs> <that cut off? laughs> I heard. I heard it the whole. It was good if it got cut off. No, I heard the whole answer. Did you hear my next question? I did not. Okay. Well, sticking with Napoli for for what a lot of people don't understand about contracts. Because I'm not quite sure a lot of people remember that this happened with John Lackey's contract, that there are clauses that you can put in Napoli's contract over the three years that say, if you spend X amount of time on the disabled list or if you have any uh, you know, major hip issues, that third year could be... Uh, voided, or uh, you know, you could you know make or less minimum salary. Exactly, right. exactly. So the fact that they could still give him a three-year deal and put certain clauses in that contract that probably seems a little more uh, realistic than just handing him a three-year deal with all guaranteed money. Yeah, I agree, and I think in the end that's what you'll see. I mean, I've been pretty consistent on this, sure. saying that I think he'll be back. Um, I, I do still think he'll be back. And, and I think that is kind of the deal you'll see. You'll see the Red Sox protect themselves in that third year with a clause that says if you should spend time on the DL with an injury related to the hip condition, uh, then, then we'll get compensated in some way. Right. So I think that's ultimately where we're headed with Mike Napoli, but we're going to play the game here for a few weeks longer, yeah. I think, and he'll play the field a little bit more. He'll sort of gauge interest from other teams a little bit more and, I think ultimately when all is said and done, the fit here is just too good. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, David Ortiz making a comment the other day in the Dominican that he is interested in returning to the Red Sox and wants to start uh, thinking about another deal here in Boston. I know it's obviously way too early to even discuss it or talk about it, but can you see the Red Sox re-signing David Ortiz after this year? Me? Hello? Damn it. What is going on? Lobber? 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 
I don't know why he keeps going. Hello? Can you hear me now? Lobber. Lobber. Yeah, sure. Oh, I just heard you breathe. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. That's so weird. This has never happened with yeah, you before. I'm, you know, and yeah, I mean, I have a hard. I just have a hard time hearing the question after I. I know answer, that's so, so strange. Know. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, David Ortiz. Okay. Make, David Ortiz making a comment in the Dominican yeah. that he wants to start uh, thinking about life with the Red Sox after his contracts up at the end of this year uh, or the end of next year. Can you see the Red Sox re-signing David Ortiz, or are we going to start hearing him complain and bitch that he's underappreciated and yada, 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 yada? Uh, what are your thoughts on David Ortiz returning to the Red Sox after this year? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I always, I'm always skeptical of those comments made in the Dominican because you you're not there, you don't hear the question, yeah. uh, you don't know if there's a, if there's a, uh, a translation issue there. Uh, I'll be there in a few weeks for his uh, charity golf event, so we'll have a chance to talk oh, to him about it face to face. But um, you know, as, as far as David goes, look, I mean, the Red Sox philosophy on this sort of thing is that they don't tend to discuss extensions of that sort, whether it's with him or John Lester, until at least January, uh, once the uh, free agent business and more pressing business is done. And I don't know that they'll go down this road with him necessarily before the season starts. Yeah. I, I think, it, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it should happen during the season, but I don't think it will happen before. I just think that, you know, at his age, and uh, he does still have another year under contract, there's not a whole lot of urgency to do it now, and I think we've been down this road before. He's He knows how important he is to this franchise. The franchise knows how, he, how important he is to the franchise, so... You know, when the time is right, I think they'll do something. And, and clearly, he wants to keep playing beyond next year, and I think they'd love to have him. So, you know, he'll probably end up creating a few more firestorms along the way about how he wishes he could get a, <laughs> a multi-year deal done. But, you know, I'm sure that when push comes to shove, it will get done. Uh, I think that both sides have the have the motivation to do it. There is no way they replace his bat in the middle of the lineup. Not right now. Not with the way he's hitting. So they know that, and don't don't make good on that. All right, I'm going to piss Christian off and ask you one more question, even though he's telling me to take a break. But I'm going to ask you first: Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Wow. Okay. This question will get will get through. Uh, Dustin Pedroia. We're, we're off to a good start. We are. Dustin Pedroia earning the Heart and Hustle Award, uh, nominated four times by the Red Sox. He finally. Gets the nod, uh, winning this year. Can you imagine anybody else winning this award on the Red Sox four times again, nominated, and this is the first time he's won it? No, I can't. You know, and you think about how many hard-nosed guys this team had this year. Guys like Johnny Gomes, who uh, you know wears the wears the soldier's helmet uh, during celebrations, and and kind of plays like he's wearing a soldier's helmet sometimes with the way he kind of crashes into the wall and the dirt and everything else. But Dustin Pedroia, to me, epitomizes heart and hustle, and I think that that's sort of, you know, what's, you know, the, the symbol of that, that he's created for himself throughout his career here. So I think he's the epitome of that award. I think he's the definition of that award. Uh, there's no secret that he's been nominated by the Red Sox for that award a bunch of times now, and he finally won it. So clearly he's sort of emblematic of what that award represents, and uh, and. I don't think the Red Sox can nominate anybody else, not as long as he's on the team playing the way he plays. All right, Scott Lauber joining us. Uh, I guess you're home, but you won't, you'll be at the winter meetings, correct? I will be, yeah. Okay, uh, Scott Lauber joining us here on Boston Herald Radio, a Red Sox beat reporter. Lauber, we thank you for your time, and we will talk to you soon. Sounds good, Jen. Thanks. All right, buddy. Uh, that's Scott Lauber again joining us here, and I am Jen Royal. I'll be back with you after this short break. BostonHerald.com Boston Herald Radio Todd Pressman here in the Boston Herald web desk. Running down our top commented stories today, readers are piling into the headline, Ryan Hannigan might catch on with the Red Sox. A story of what the team is doing at the catcher position where free agent Jared Saltalamacchia is looking for a three-year contract one the Red Sox might not be willing to sign. Reporter Scott Lauber says that Cincinnati Reds catcher Ryan Hannigan fits the profile of what the Sox are seeking, a defense-oriented stopgap to play 90-100 to 100 games next season in tandem with veteran backup David Ross, while strong-armed 23-year-old Christian Vasquez continues to mature at AAA. Albert also points out that Hannigan grew up in Andover and was 
teammate with Ross for parts of two seasons in Cincinnati, where he played an average of 88 games in 2009. Mongo Melty had this to say on the speculation. Hannigan would be a huge defensive upgrade over Salty. I think his career caught stealing percentage is over 40%. The question is, can he start hitting again like he used to? And in response to the Herald's report on evaluations of Boston public school teachers and criticism by the teachers' union that the review was discriminatory and biased, Screaming Eagle commented, When you have some third-year teachers who go off to the principal program reviewing 30-year veterans, you're going to have some age bias. It's not the teachers, it's the kids and their lack of parental support. For the latest on these and other stories, go to bostonherald.com, check out our free sports and news apps, or pick up a copy of today's Herald. I'm Todd Pressman, and that's the Boston Herald Web Traffic Report. Things are looking nice in Boston this afternoon with sunshine and blue sky. There'll be some clouds coming in later on, but it'll be mild. Temperatures not far from 50. Overnight, mostly cloudy, 35 to 43. And tomorrow, mostly cloudy and mild, though 50s, maybe a shower or two, no big deal. Arctic air starts to spill in here on Saturday with a lot of clouds. A flurry or a late-day snow squall will drop temperatures from the 40s back to near freezing by dark. A very cold, strong northwest wind Saturday night and Sunday may not get above 30 Sunday the afternoon. And of course, for more weather information, go to heraldweather.com. For Boston Herald Radio, I'm Mark Resenthal. More leads, more meetings, and more satisfied customers. You want that, and we can help. I'm Butch Stearns from the Pulse Network. We help companies grow their business through their website with content marketing. Build a strong online presence by humanizing your brand and telling better stories. When you create, curate, and distribute compelling content, you'll get searched by more of the right people. Let's talk about how content marketing can work for you. Just go to thepulsenetwork.com slash herald. That's thepulsenetwork.com slash herald to learn more. We have moved. Dick Doherty's Comedy Den is now located at 184 High Street below Howell at the Moon, across from Rose Wharf in the Financial District. We are Boston's only full-service comedy club. Showtimes are 7.30 p.m. every evening. Prices are $15 per person on Thursdays and $20 per person on Fridays and Saturdays. Open mic night every Sunday in Boston or join us at our other locations in Waltham, Worcester, and Methuen. Looking for a great way to make your private party or corporate event the one that everyone talks about? Look no further than Dick Doherty Comedy Productions. Call us at 1-800-401-2221. The year is almost over, but 495 Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram is going out big. It's the Big Finish event. Big savings, big selection, big finish. Choose from over 100 new Rams in stock. Save up to $10,000 on a new Ram 1500 Crew Cab 4x4. Big savings, big selection. Don't miss the Big Finish event. See all our low and upfront pricing online at 495ram.com or visit us at 495 Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Lowell. Morning meeting with Jacqueline Cashman and Hillary Chabot. Keep Chris Cassidy on the phone. The next step for Suffolk Downs is they're basically going to leave East Boston behind and say, and they're going to embrace Revere, which is the city that embraced them, and they're going to try to cobble together some way to make this happen in their yeah. 52 or 53 acres that they have in Revere. They have the Wonderland uh, Greyhound uh, track as well, so they're going to try to put something together that way. Obviously, the question is, is there enough time to do this? They have a long way to go. This was a David and Goliath story, uh, yeah. you know, last uh, yesterday, but them being Goliath, they are now the underdogs in this race. If they really wanted to scramble, I guess they could not only uh, put out a new proposal, but as soon as they do that, try and set the election ASAP and try and get it in under the wire. But December 31st is coming up quick, man, and that's, I mean, it really does seem pretty grim, I think. Morning meeting on Boston Herald Radio. Don't miss the Ultrasonic Rock Orchestra performing Jesus Christ Superstar at the Regent Theater in Arlington. Friday and Saturday, November 22nd and 23rd at 8 p.m. and Sunday, November 24th at 2 p.m. Dinner and a show is also available. Relive the rock opera that changed the world. Check out our website at www.regenttheater.com or call us at 781-646-4TICKS for more details. Boston Herald Radio.
All right, well, I almost just met my perfect man here at the Herald until he told me he's too afraid to get tattoos. <laughs> You're out. Really? Out. Really? I've taken other people to get tattoos. That doesn't count. You got to get in the chair, buddy. I know. I know. Scott Mutrin. There you go. All right. How do you spell that? It's M U T R Y N. Oh, easy. Okay. So we're going to call you Mute or right. Scott, whatever. It doesn't that matter. Works. Um, that works easy. All right. So tattoos are like my, my crutch. That's what you go back to? If you have, I don't care what you look like. If you have a full sleeve, right. I'm in love with you. Yeah, I don't have any. I have yeah. a buddy that has um, a kid I went to high school with. Got like the the thing of the Sistine Chapel across his back. I would not. Like date, him. you know, God reaching out. Yes. To, yeah, he's got that whole thing over this, his Is whole back. Is he very religious? No, he just wanted it. I guess. Why? It was, it was awkward. I, he just wanted a tattoo, so he like spent all this time thinking about it, and then That's he decided to do, to go but do I'm, it. It sounds very hot. Really? Is he bald? Uh, no, he's red. He's redhead. Oh no, I don't like him. He's a ginger kid. Well, uh, he's a redheaded <laughs> stepchild. Well, Christian knows this. Bald men is my other crutch. Oh, really? Yeah. So nice. So I'm in. You're out. You have no tats. I know. I don't yeah, have. To. Yeah. But that really? That's that's that of a high of a uh, priority. It's up there. <laughs> it's up there. Okay. In fact, wow. I will say this: the few dates that I've been on this year. What month is this? It's uh, November. Yeah, I've been on a few. A lot of first dates. No. No, actually. That's good. No, no. You know, they're still lingering in my life, and I hate them all. <laughs> but I asked one guy who I actually really started to like. I was like, listen, what are the chances that we could, like, take you to go get, like, a sleeve? Right. <laughs> he was like, they, yeah, not no. happening. And I was so turned off. I was like, well, I don't, I actually legit don't think I can date him anymore. Really? Yes, because. Does it have to be arm ink? Or does it just, if it can be anywhere? It can, it, no, it doesn't have to be arming, but it has to be like noticeable in the summer. It okay. just has to be everywhere. Yeah, see, I, one, I don't have anything cool that I would want tattooed on That's me. That's a very I don't have like, I'm not like, I'm not Irish, so I wouldn't have like any of right, like the like Irish flags. Cross. Right, a lot of people do that. I don't, my, I, I'm not like really jacked like those guys, so like an arm, like an arm tattoo would, would look kind of awkward on you me. You mean you're soft? No, 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 I'm just, I am lean. I'm just not jacked. I'm not the guy that does a lot of curls at the jacked gym. Is, jacked isn't always good. Those right. I'm lean. people are what we call meatheads. Some. I'm wiry. I'm strong. Stronger <laughs> than I look. I'm just picturing you with no shirt on, covered in tattoos, and I think that you would go from like an 8 to a 10. Really? Yeah. What about the beard? So this is, the, this is not an all-the-time thing. This it's is, not? No. What is I, it, what I, you, I just had, I've grown it for November. Oh yeah, and what I've is this? It. It's is Movember, it, so I it's like you a, have to grow a mustache. Yeah, well, some, some people do it. The what mustache does that mean? is awkward. Explain it's just it more me. of a. Um, it's it started as a way people would just donate um, money for charity, okay. usually for cancer. Okay. And um, these guys would go and um, get mustaches, and then at the like the last day, in November thirtieth, there's a big party, and okay. then they all like show it off, and whoever wins like gets. Where's the, the party? Some it's in New York. Some it's it's re it started in New York. It's okay. now gone into Boston. I know a couple guys that are doing it. Really awkward. I mean, so mustaches are really awkward. I mean, you look like a serial killer or a porn star. Right. And they're so unattractive. And the beard? What do you? Yeah. I love beards. I mean, I don't like bushy beards. I like beards. But uh, I had two dates with one person. Right. About a month ago. Yeah, and then he grew the mustache, and it was one night that he was going to come out and meet all my girlfriends. They're like, oh, we can't wait to meet him. We can't wait to meet this dude. Wait, on the second date, you're bringing Third. him out to meet the girlfriends? Third. Really? That's and a, it was that's like, aggressive. Oh, we were already out drinking. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't like... Barriers are down. It wasn't like, come, it, meet, the, come right. meet the crew. We're going to go to my mom's down. house after. It was <laughs> like, hey, we're bombed. What are you doing? Stop by. It was one of those, you know? And where was the bar now? Because that's another thing, though. Some yeah, bars are very we? are very open to you coming and, you know, yeah. joining. It's, it's, not as, think. it's not as, ver as I know intimidating. We were. we were at a casino night. Okay. For charity. So it was that's fun. That's great, right. You know? And, uh... He sent me a picture of the of the stash. Right. And I went, oh, yeah, no. Oh. And I was like, you cannot be my friends until that crap is off your face. It's not, yeah, you never get a, a second chance to make a first impression, exactly. right? Exactly. You are not meeting my friends with that mustache. And your friends' opinions of the guys really matters? No. Like no. Well, personality, what they, yes. What if they said, like, he, he looks like a squid? Would you I like? Would, would you be like? Would you be like? Well, I think he's cute. So I would have said, I don't care for, what you think. You. you are not exactly Cindy Crawford, and I don't think looks are everything. I'm not big on looks. You tell your friends that? Totally. Yeah. 
Oh, do you, you've known me for five minutes. You think I wouldn't tell my friends that? No, no, no. Not that they're not good looking, but you, you, I mean, do you tell them that they're not Cindy Crawford? If they were to make fun of somebody that wasn't cute, okay. I don't think you should ever make fun of anybody's looks. You don't think cute is an important, you know, I think trait? that if you have an amazing personality and if you're, there's something about you, like something. Okay. So you're, you're, we're dealing you're, in the gray. And when the, the something, the it, it, could, thing. it could be anything. Yeah, right. That's it a huge gray You might have though. a little lisp. It could be you might have a, a, a good lips. It could be he has perfect teeth. It could be something. It could be the way that you laugh. It could be something so minor that all of a sudden makes you hot. Really? Yeah. I'm big on personality. Yeah. Because I'm overwhelming. Really? When I go on dates, I scare people. How's that? Because I just, I'm just. I, I'm I curse. I'm oh, that I'm I just I'm I have an overwhelming personality. You're in the middle of things. Now are you like when you go on are you like one of those people that orders very complicated or are you off the menu? Off the menu. Okay, that's good. Like and I'm one a eater. Of, I'm disgusting. I will eat a really? steak in front of you on a first date. That's not bad. What's yeah. wrong with eating a steak? Why is why has that gotten a bad rap, by the way? Um everyone thinks that they have to eat see I'm I'm super self conscious like when I when I eat it's like I feel like because I got told like in my freshman year of high school on homecoming date, I was we were out having dinner and I was eating and like the girl commented that I had a big mouth when I was taking the bite of a salad. So now <laughs> all of a sudden you know it's like that how the things Who of our youth. Who says that? Who says that? My date did obviously. You didn't marry and, her, did you? No. Okay. She good. has she had huge blonde hair. It was back in the day when oh, I was nice. very curly blonde hair, nice. very tall, and and I was so I've always become very self conscious of taking right. or eating even now like eating at parties or like if I'm at a cocktail really? thing. Really? Yeah, because I'm always worried I don't that think you have a big mouth at all. I know, but sometimes when it opens, like maybe I have like a snake mouth that I can like drop the jaw and next thing you That's know I can like hilarious. consume like this whole Clorox thing. Isn't it funny how one person one irrelevant person can make a comment that makes you now self-conscious for the rest of your life? It's true. I, I, it's it's that's true, a hundred percent. And then the my like the first serious girlfriend I had yeah. told me that I was too nice. I would make the mixtapes and do and do nice random acts of kindness. So she told her I was too nice. <gasps> So then that changed my whole outlook on everything. Well, so then I went to the other extreme, which my wife wants to fight this lady, by the way. Really? Why? Yeah. Well, because she's like, she, she's just like, why can't you just like be like, have those nice moments? Aww. Like I have nice moments, yeah. but it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm too, I'm leery of being too nice. Well, here's the thing. I think that if a guy is too nice, that means you don't like him that much. Yeah, he's a pushover, though. You don't like that. But no one you, likes super sensitive guy. Let's be honest. I agree with that. Super In sensitive fact, guy's kind story. of a pansy. But if you really like somebody, yeah. then they're not too nice. You actually say, you know what? I lucked out. I love him, and he's really nice. If you if if he's too nice, and that just means you don't really like him, so you're annoyed that he's too nice. That's a convenient excuse, I think. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's it's good. It's a nice way to I look. I mean, they at say it. nice guys finish last, but. You know, it's funny because one of the guys that I went on a date with, he, I didn't, I actually didn't like him. And my right. friends were like, on a scale, of, I, I do this thing, a scale of one to 100. I'm a Why 100? You got to cut it shorter. No, it's I too, don't. Too many. No, I, no, I don't. I don't. Why? Should, everyone argues, argues with me about this. It doesn't, one to 10 doesn't work. Okay. One to 100 is so much better. You so dateable go, is what? Anything in the 60s is dateable? No. So 70s is dateable. The 60s is 80s fail. Is, okay. okay. So 70s is dateable. 70s is you can work with. 80s is, you know, I like him. multiple dates. I like him. Can take it to a maybe yes. like a like a weekend away to see if we can yes, be away. Absolutely. And then 90s is like the full court like, press, watch football fork, with them. Stick a fork in me. I don't want. Yes. Lay on the couch, watch Homeland with them. Yes. And all that. Yeah, so I was at a How 70s. many 90s have you have you had in the last 2 years? Zero. Really? Zero. A lot of 70s? Uh I had a 90 and then after 3 months he was a 50. So wait a minute, you can you can go down. Your scale is Hell ever yeah, changing. Yeah, totally. How did he go from a 90 to a 50? Because he was like it, it, it was it was exhausting. It was just exhausting. Worked too much. Could never like get a straight answer out of him, and it really? was a turn off. And I finally I was just like, I got to be honest. I actually legit hate you. You quickly just turn the tables yeah, on it. Like which I is like good. like the cuddle, and we'll let you see me in the morning to <laughs> yeah, with no makeup and none of that on. To I, like I want. I'm okay with myself in the morning. Right. Yeah. I mean, I pretty much look the same all the time. I look the same all the time. 
I mean, I don't. I do. Obviously, you can see I don't wear makeup, and I don't have hair to comb. Yeah, that's very true. No, and even for some with the, reason, and then now with the beard, I don't have to shave. I remember the first time I had a sleepover with somebody like four years ago. I got up in the morning, I was brushing my teeth, and he was staring at me, and I was like, "Why are you looking at me like that?" And he said, "Cause you look like you didn't even go to bed." Really? And that was the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. <sighs> See, that's, that's a total, I would be like, that's yeah. a kiss-ass line, like seriously. No, he was like looking at me like I was nuts, and I went, what? Why? He's like, you Maybe look like just you the, didn't like, even go to bed. I think I bet he was judging how you were brushing your teeth deep down. Probably. Then, luck, kudos Probably. to him. Kudos to him for coming up with that Probably. sappy line to you to drop <laughs> Probably. that. Probably. So that he, you didn't, he didn't look like a creep to you. Well, back to the guy who was at a 73. Yes. And I was like, I'm at a 73. I'm kind of on the fence. I don't know if I like him. I don't want to kiss him. Oh, man. And then I didn't hear from him. Yeah. And then I liked him. Oh, God. see, that's what I mean. The too nice. You can't be too nice. And I was like, he didn't respond to me. I think I like him now. <laughs> like, <laughs> see, who does that? Nice what does that mean? So, wait, you've gone out you, You've gone out with him and you didn't kiss him? So I mean, how can... I did, my but thing I was, is, like, a, when I, I was single, is like I, I would say that I couldn't really like someone until until you kiss them. Because yeah, then that's right, a because right. there's sometimes like the, you think you have a connection and right. then and then you have that kiss and it's just it's it was all right. horrific. It it's was horrific, all right. and you want to run away. It was all right. The second night I ran away. Yeah, that's there's nothing worse than that. The second night I kind of ran away. You try you try to lose your phone number and you then try I to tried grab their cell phone and delete your number. Cl very close, but I was like, you know, I'm going to give it another shot. Okay. And that didn't happen. And then it's even worse. I just have that was it. Yeah. There's nothing worse than that. It's the biggest yeah. turnoff for me ever. Such, yeah, worse ever. Yeah, see, so like... So I'm back, at, I'm back at square one. The board is wiped clean. But you know what? I will say this. My four best friends, there's five of us like in my little rat pack. Oh, my God. No baggage, no booty call, no ex-boyfriend. When I talk about a clean slate for all five of us, I mean it. You guys are all single as and ready to mingle like as single as can possibly be really there's no late night texter there's like no one in the Ca back of our head really no, but don't you think they're hiding nothing. something from nope. you i bet nothing. they are no because we're always together nothing no one nothing. ever makes the old i'm going home i'm tired nothing and makes a quick nothing. little stop it's remarkable the five of us are in this together it's actually That's pretty awesome really it's awesome how because they're awesome your friends are awesome. Awesome. All different walks of life are all pretty much the same. We're all the same. Looks the same? We all look very different. Who's the enforcer? So, you know, girls, when they go out in packs, yeah. right? Obviously, there's like, there's the cute ones, and then there's like the enforcer girl that like doesn't let, she like controls the perimeter to not let certain guys in. You guys have this. Don't deny it. There's two of us. Right. Yeah. So it's like you, the guy Friendly has to Jess. be able, the guy has to be able to penetrate the enforcer yeah. to get into the group. Definitely. Uh, uh, then it's me. Really? Then it's me. You don't look like an enforcer. I don't? What do no. I look like? Y you don't look like an enforcer. Then it's Jess Moran. Yeah. It's either me or Jess. We're right. kind of in this together. Because the enforcer is tough. You got to like, you know, you got to beat the enforcer even if you want to talk to the other girls. That's, that's Actually, you know what? I don't, I don't, we might not have that. We talk to everyone because if we don't like them, we just make fun of them. So guys like that. Guys like to be made fun of. Yeah, it's fun. It's we true. have so much They're fun. They're so easy to be made fun of. We have so much fun. Are we going to take a break before Christian kills us? Uh, Jen Royal Scott Mutrin here on Boston Herald Radio. We will, I promise you, talk sports at some point. Yeah, we will. We'll get okay. it. I'm down with that. I mean, this is, this is good. This it's is good. good. This I is like, like heart-to-heart -heart stuff. I like it. All right. All right. Back with you after the short break. Reversing the curse of terrestrial radio. This is Boston Herald Radio. Are you looking for a great deal on a new Subaru? Metro West Subaru on Route 9 East in Natick is your place to find them. They have the all-new redesigned 2014 Foresters. They're available now. They also have 0% financing on all leftover models. Metro West Subaru has the largest pre-owned Subaru inventory in the Metro Boston area with over 30 certified Subarus in stock. Check them out today. You won't be disappointed. Do what I did. Check out Metro West Subaru, Route 9 East Natick, and as always, expect the best at Metro West. Boston Herald Radio. Call or text with your opinion at 617-286-8818. It's 3 a.m. you can't sleep, so don't lose another week. Just lose the matches. Right now at Sleepy's, get great Black Friday deals. Save up to 70% on every mattress in the store. With mattress sets starting at $199. Get a Beautyrest Queen set for just $499 and a free 32-inch HDTV with select models. And we can make you a dream. 
Sleepies, the mattress professionals, making the world a better place to sleep. When you've got a dirty job, you need a dirty girl. You need Dirty Girl Disposal. Let Dirty Girl Disposal and their fleet of trucks haul away your trash, debris, and waste. Whether you've got a work site, a job site, or just a house full of junk, Dirty Girl will be there to get dirty and get the job done. And if you've ever had a trash hauler miss a run or leave a mess and couldn't get them on the phone to fix the problem, there's always the Dirty Girl ready to take your call. Hi, this is your Dirty Girl. And the best part? Dirty Girl has the lowest prices around. You can have Dirty Girl's great service, fun attitude, and reliability. And save money, too. So whether your current waste company is unreliable, overpriced, or just plain butt up, hey, make the change to Dirty Girl Disposal. Call 877-321-3003. That's 877-321-3003. Or visit DirtyGirlDisposal.com. That's DirtyGirlDisposal.com. Because nobody does it like a dirty girl. Boston Howard Radio. Raw Talk Radio. Minus the PC and FCC. Oh, and Static Free. <laughs> Because human genius has now destroyed the impediment of the terrestrial radio. Boston Herald Radio. Boston Herald Radio. First there was the hitman, Johnny Moderano, then the rifleman, Stevie Fleming. But no one terrorized the city of Boston for over two decades like James J. Whitey Bulger. Or as I call him in my new book about his trial, Rat Man. For years, Whitey would glare at me as I drove past the South Boston Liquor Mart, making it clear that I was on his bleep list. By the time he was arrested in 2011, it was well established that he was just a big, fat rat. And now it's my turn to glare at him, even though the prolific snitch did everything he could to keep me out of the courtroom last summer. Rat Man is my record of the Whitey Bulger trial, complete with never-before-heard witness testimony and shocking photographs of some of Bulger's grisly handiwork. You'll also get some priceless play-by-play of the Rat Man himself lashing out at former associates in the courtroom. Get your edition of Rat Man today. It's as easy as going to HowieCarshow.com or to your local bookstore. One more thing, Whitey always said that Christmas is for cops and kids. Prove him wrong by picking up a copy of Rat Man today as a present for the avid reader in your household this Christmas. It's Rat Man, the trial and conviction of Whitey Bulger. Buy online at HowieCarshow.com or in fine bookstores everywhere. Rat Man. Todd Pressman here in the Boston Herald web desk. Running down our top commented stories today, readers are piling into the headline, Ryan Hannigan might catch on with the Red Sox. A story of what the team is doing at the catcher position where free agent Jared Saltalamacchia is looking for a three-year contract, one the Red Sox might not be willing to sign. Reporter Scott Lauber says that Cincinnati Reds catcher Ryan Hannigan fits the profile of what the Sox are seeking, a defense-oriented stopgap to play 90-100 to 100 games next season in tandem with veteran backup David Ross, while strong-armed 23-year-old Christian Vasquez continues to mature at AAA. Albert also points out that Hannigan grew up in Andover and was teammate with Ross for parts of two seasons in Cincinnati, where he played an average of 88 games in 2009. Mongo Melty had this to say on the speculation. Hannigan would be a huge defensive upgrade over Salty. I think his career caught stealing percentage is over 40%. The question is, can he start hitting again like he used to? And in response to the Herald's report on evaluations of Boston public school teachers and criticism by the teachers' union that the review was discriminatory and biased, Screaming Eagle commented, When you have some third-year teachers who go off to the principal program reviewing 30-year veterans, you're going to have some age bias. It's not the teachers, it's the kids and their lack of parental support. For the latest on these and other stories, go to bostonherald.com, check out our free sports and news apps, or pick up a copy of today's Herald. I'm Todd Pressman, and that's the Boston Herald Web Traffic Report. Things are looking nice in Boston this afternoon with sunshine and blue sky. There'll be some clouds coming in later on, but it'll be mild. Temperature's not far from 50. 
Overnight, mostly cloudy, 35 to 43. And tomorrow, mostly cloudy and mild, though 50s, maybe a shower or two, no big deal. Arctic air starts to spill in here on Saturday with a lot of clouds. A flurry or a late-day snow squall will drop temperatures from the 40s back to near freezing by dark. A very cold, strong northwest wind Saturday night and Sunday may not get above 30 Sunday afternoon. And, of course, for more weather information, go to heraldweather.com. For Boston Herald Radio, I'm Mark Resenthal. Radio 5.0 has arrived on your PC, in your car, and in the palm of your hand. This is Boston Herald Radio. Uh, Am I on? (laughs) Oh, God. This sports show has turned into Dr. Phil, and I don't want to change it. Dr. Phil's kind of ugly. So can I can I be someone a Fine. little this bit more attractive? This show has called in. This show Dr. has Mute. turned into the hot Dr. Mutrin, <laughs> 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 giving me boy advice. Well, I I mean obviously I know how guys think and work. Sorry. So do I. No, you no. think you do. Oh, All no, no, no. girls think you. Oh do. no 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 no! I'm different. I'm oh with, stop! I'm, You're not different. I you have, know how many times I've heard I work in locker rooms. Do. Trust me, my best friends are guys. I know all their tricks. Okay. All their tricks. Mm-hmm. You don't know all of them. They can't give them all away. I know most of their tricks. Okay. What's the biggest guy trick that you know? <sighs> okay, trick? Yeah. I got to think. Um, I don't know. I just know when they're lying. Like, it's not I me, just, it's you. No, I just think it's very... Okay, like when... When guys say like they're busy or they missed the text or their phone died, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. It takes a second to respond to somebody. A right. second. Yeah, sometimes. Okay, like I had been dating somebody for like six months Whoa. and... And? The person calling me right now. Is? And he said he forgot my birthday. Girls are really sensitive about that. You guys are really... No, no, no. Women are really big on the, the whole like dates thing. Like anniversaries, thing. meets, first time we kiss, blah, blah, blah. This you got to remember the all these things. Nope. I, this, this is my take on it. I actually... Okay, my birthday was on a Tuesday. And on a Sunday, we were talking. And I was like, ah, oh, Tuesday's my birthday. Like, I just, I just wanted to make sure he didn't forget. Uh-huh. Um, we didn't talk again until Thursday. So four days went by. And he completely missed it by a day and change. Um, yeah, by two days, two, two, two in the front and two in the back. It's well done. Right. That's a blatant double, double finger barrel. Solid like double, the double, the double middle finger to you. So here's my thing. Here's my take on the birthday. Yep. And I said this to him. I was like, you know, I hate flowers. I don't eat chocolate. Yep. I don't need candles. I want nothing fancy. I don't need anything planned. I don't need a surprise. Right. I don't need anything. You just want a card. I don't even want a card. What do you want? Just go happy birthday? Just acknowledge it's your day. Acknowledgement. And here's the thing. I said, it's not even about my birthday. Like me, 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 me. And I'm not even being a chick. I said, here's the thing. I don't care if you're my neighbor, if you're my mom, if you're my co-host, if you're my producer, if you're my friend, if you're my sister, if you're my boyfriend. If you are in my life. Yeah. If you are an integral part of my life, again, you could be meter. The fact that it's not in the front of your head is just, is odd to me. Did meter call you on your birthday? Uh Aha, see? Yeah, I think so. You text? When I came in, he was like, happy birthday. Oh, that's good, so you remember. But you know what I'm saying? Like the fact that it's not in your head. Means you're not that important. End of story. There you go. End of story. That's it. Cut it and move on. Bye. Right. That Wash was your for, hands. That was it for me. Punch his pilot. Wash the it. hands and move on. I can't believe you're mad about your birthday. I said, that's not it. It's so much bigger than that. It has nothing to do with the birthday. It has to do with if I like you as a human being. Right. Well, see, it's guys, we're not, guys are, we're not very deep. We're puddles. Women are like lakes, How deep oceans. What is this? Well, just they were dense. They miss some But you know what? Things. Saying happy birthday to somebody is the same to me as, oh, you were sick yesterday. How are you feeling? It's, right. It's, I get it is your special day. I like when you acknowledge the special day, though. You got to acknowledge the special day. I don't even know if it's like. Well, I don't even think of birthdays as special days. It it's is your just, special it's day. It's just the, no, no, no. It is. It's just the right thing to do. It's a celebration of not just you, not just for you, but everyone involved in your life. It's your <laughs> so special funny. day. 
It's true. <laughs> your so parents funny. should be, yeah, your parents should, you know, celebrate it as well. That's the day they, they brought you into the world and all that other fun stuff. And siblings, too, because without that day, they wouldn't have you. That is very true. It's not just a celebration that of you. It's a true. celebration of every person you touch <laughs> in your life. Of my existence on this earth. Absolutely. All right, well. I say I, the word absolutely. I'm very lot. upset by this. Well, I mean, I don't blame you. So, no, guys, I'm I like, not like by so that. Let, let, I'm going to throw this in front of you. I'm, this is going <laughs> to prolong this non-sports talk for a sec, but I think you're going to get it right. So, guys, to show you the 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 lack of depth that what we have, right? So, mm -hmm. I was obviously in um, I was in New Jersey last night for okay. a funeral with some of my college roommates. Okay. And they decided this morning, as I I got up and get, went to work out, and I was showering. Now, the bathtub that we shared a room, three of us shared a room. Guy time, right? So they asked for my phone, my password, because their phone is dead. So my college roommate, who I lived together since we were freshmen, yeah. he still lives here in the North End. Really? He's married. He's got a two-year-old son. That wasn't but even what I was asking. <laughs> that's usually what comes up next. And you don't want to after you hear this. Okay. He proceeds to come Can in with my phone. Time? No. He took naked pictures of me and then sent them from my phone to work people. That's awesome. That's not awesome. That's terrible. Well, then it went to work people. It's bad. Yeah. But it is funny. That's something really? I would do. Yeah. Oh, I was going to kill him. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm horrendous like that. He's In terrible. Fact, I had an intervention with all of my girlfriends once. and they You were took like, naked pictures of no, your girlfriends they were just and like, sent them out? They were just like, you have to stop with the, uh, with the paper trails of stuff. Why oh. would you ever give your passcode to your phone to a friend? A friend like well, see, that. First of all, he this is, he's like my brother. It doesn't matter. He's with my, but here's the thing. He's my brother and like my brother. And I didn't, uh, what, 38 years old, do you think he would be mature? I didn't, would think that, you know, he would be mature enough <laughs> to handle this issue. And just like he just needed to call his wife. Or Apparently he just needed not. To make a no. Call. no, he proceeded to take a bunch of naked pictures of me and then send them to my friends. Yeah. And, well, excuse me, coworkers. Well, you know what? I don't think that he's really your friend. Really? Yeah, that's very mean. Yeah, and th they just texted me to just tell me to basically, ha, 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 eat, eat it. Oh, really? Yeah, they're nasty people. Suck it. Yeah, d yeah Daniel and Scott, it. that's what they're doing right now. They're laughing at me at work right now. Well, should we ask Steve Conroy about his personal life and how he met his wife and all that, or should we just talk Bruins, Christian? How about we just do Bruins? All right. All right. Uh, well, joining us now on no. the phone, what? Steve Conroy, right? No. Oh, he's not? Not yet. 415. Why does... Someone's on the phone. No one's on the phone. Oh, yeah. nice. Good oh. try. I haven't yes. dialed it yet. No we one's have nine phone. minutes. It's ticking. Yeah, but no one's there. There's no name. Oh, all right. Just wow. kidding. Good one. Just kidding. So I now I know that you did a lot of work for the Red Sox, right? Um, and, you do, and you work for Major League Baseball, right? Okay. Well, yes and no. I covered the Yankees for seven years. Okay. Now, are you from... I'm from Boston. What part? Yeah. Uh, Belmont went to high school in Mansfield. Okay. Actually, from Mansfield. Nice. Yeah, next okay. to Foxborough. Um, my mother's from Belmont. My father's from Charlestown. I lived in Charlestown for a while. Love. I lived over on, um, um, right by the, the fire department in St. Mary's Church for a couple of years. Oh, yeah. And then right on High Street by the Boys and Girls Club. Very uh, cool. For a while. I like Charlestown. I love Charlestown. It's, it's gotten so much nicer. It is. It's, it's the place where uh, young ladies go to feel safe. <laughs> really? Don't worry about going to wet ladies night Wednesday at the Warren Tavern, right? There's, well, I mean, that's what one of three places to go to besides the two Sullies. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, Ironside, true. right? Right. Um, so, the, so you're a Sox, you're more of a baseball fan. Uh, yeah, I'm I, I was told you're not a college football aficionado. I, have, I don't watch knowledge. college football or basketball. You don't watch football at all? I don't, but here's the thing. Um, um, hold excuse on, what's me? going on here? We have some uh, breaking news from the Boston Hill Newsroom. Oh, okay. okay. Here Jack you go. and Canar Sears, can you give it to us? Hi, how are you? Hi there, sorry to interrupt, folks. Uh, we have breaking news in from the uh, district attorney's office in Essex County. Philip Chisholm, who was the 14-year-old Danvers High School student who was arrested for murdering one of his teachers, math teacher oh, yeah. Colleen Ritzer. Yeah. Um, he's, not, he's been indicted today by an Essex County grand jury, the 14-year-old charged with murder, aggravated rape, an armed robbery in connection with the killing. Uh, the ruling on the exact cause of death is still pending, but uh, some new details we've learned about the assault, the alleged assault, um, is, is that he actually was armed with a box cutter and robbed this teacher of credit cards and iPhone and her underwear um, after what? the assault. So we're learning some disturbing new details after a grand jury. 14 years old. So he was charged as an adult? Yes, yes. That it, sounds right. like What do you have to be? 
13? I thought it was 15. Well, under under 15. a murder charge, there's great levity yeah. in bringing an adult wow. charge. Wow, yeah. that is unbelievable. Okay, great. so wait, a box cutter? Yeah, he um, had a box cutter in here. Robber of credit cards and then stole her underwear? And her iPhone, yeah, That's according terrible. to the grand jury investigation. So, yeah, uh, an extra dimension of disturbing on this particular story here as a result of the, uh, the new indictment. That is unbelievable. And now I'm wondering what the motive was. I yeah, wonder if it was just a robbery gone wrong. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's clear that there was some kind of, you know, uh, not relationship is clearly the wrong word, but there was right. some kind of knowledge between the two. They were known to each other. Absolutely. There, are some, there sounds like there is some, some background into this. There's, this is not just a passing by. It's not like that new phase that's going around where everyone's walking around. What is it, New Jersey, New York, where they're just doing knockout? You've seen this? Uh, it is un. Believable. Well, I touched a nerve there with you, didn't I? I can't believe it. Yeah, it's terrible. They think it's so funny. Do I you know. know about this? I don't. I can't say I do. Maybe okay, you... it's... um. Kids it's... just walk around in groups. They and, walk around uh, in groups. They'll see someone walk by themselves. Anyone. It could be a woman. Them, and they'll come and try to and knock you out. Like, ask you for directions and then knock you out. And, sometimes and then take they, your wallet. Sometimes and they don't mm. even do that. Mm. And sometimes they don't even rob you. Mm. Yeah. They just walk up behind you and they uh, and they tr they try to knock you out. It could be yeah. a guy walking with a briefcase home from right. work. It could be a woman walking with Four her. Four people have been killed from it. Yeah, they just it. knock people and then they laugh. Oh, hey, she's knocked out. She's knocked out. Yeah, it's hilarious. a game. It's a game. Yeah, yeah. it's almost it's like an on-foot version of it that is, highway chase with, right. with the motorcycles. You're right. Okay, so wait, you think there was a prior relationship between this, the the student? Relationship's and the, the wrong word. In other words, he know he knew her as a teacher and. And so it's not like a random robbery. The question was, is that was this a robbery as a motive? Right. Um, and I think that was that's just a circumstance of what happened. Who who knows? Now, gr granted, I'm not a a, a detective yeah. or a lawyer, but I've watched a good amount of CSI and Law and Order. There it is. To know that when you take a personal thing, whether it, especially underwear, that makes it more of a personal crime instead of yeah. as, as to just taking money where most robberies are taking are done sloppy mm -hmm. to just get quick cash most robberies just robberies mm -hmm. but when you do take it for other stuff and and you bring more into it and uh, taking a piece of something personal off someone makes it a personal crime which means that there is a relationship and not in the sense of you know sense of that they hung out and stuff but right. that but there's there's a knowledge of each other oh right. he wanted yeah. her underwear so wait did he slice her throat well, no, not clear what, if anything, he did with the box cutter. He is charged with aggravated rape, which means an object was used in the commission of that rape. What that object was and how relevant it may or may not be is, is up for discussion. But, I mean, it, you know, what was clearly a horrifying case is, has gotten a bit more horrifying in terms of some of these new details. And, and to your question, Jen, uh, he's charged as a youthful offender under the aggravated rape and armed robbery indictments. So um, that means anyone between 14 and 17 who commits an offense that's a felony and causes serious bodily harm is charged as a youthful offender. Oh. Oh. Um, so he's getting life. He's going to Walpole. Yeah. You would you would think. I mean, if if what's alleged here holds up, you know, yeah. and, and, and motive is always the question in something like this. Um, M O not not M O kind of like motivation right. and you know, perhaps we'll find out, perhaps we won't after this trial's over, whenever that might be. Oh. That is shocking. The trials bring out the worst stuff. I mean just think of, you know, think about all the other details that come into the trial with everything that they got coming on top of that. The fact that this is just the the periphery of that. Once you get into the to the nuts and bolts and the real testimony, that's when, that's the sad stuff. That's right. like when you read into some of the stuff. It's just it's disheartening. Yeah, when you're in that courtroom and you hear the yeah. the further detail. Right. Um, yeah, there there's a lot that isn't said here. I'm sure as well. Mm. Oof, all right, there you have it. That was it. uplifting. God, between that and the and the husband who killed the babies and the wife. Oh, and thank you so yeah, much. I saw thank that. you. That's really. Um, Incredible. All right. So th the fact that he put her in a recycling bin and dragged her down the hallway and threw her in the back of the school is how a 15 year old does that. Bad. 14 year old is, is absolutely amazing. It really um, is sad. Well, what happened to Conroy? Oh, 415. I'm losing my mind. You really are. I'm losing I've thrown you off. You Am have. I throwing you off? How's that? A little in a bit. bad well, way. I thought I've kind of broken I down know. the barriers. We well, should I'll, be. I'll tell you in a second why you've thrown me off. Um, I'll tell you at the break why you've thrown okay, me off. Okay, fair, fair enough. Know, how's that? Fair enough. Um, so we are going to talk a little bit, a little bit about the Bruins. What do you know about the Bruins? I love the Bruins. A good buddy of mine used to. Um, so I grew up in Ohio, but okay. I became a hockey fan. A buddy of mine used to play for the Bruins. Ian Moran. I don't know him. He's a tremendous guy. He lives down in Duxbury. Does some youth coaching. He is. Uh, he is, and a couple of guys I work with are old college hockey guys. Mm -hmm. So I've learned through osmosis all this <laughs> stuff about it. And it's great because I it feel is. like 
it's, I've popped my Bruins cherry like three, yeah. three or four years ago. Actually, no, no, no. It's probably like five years ago. They're awesome guys, yeah. too. They're, they're such uh, good dudes. Really? Oh, my God. They're hockey guys are interesting birds. I knew them at school when I went to, to, to Boston College. I met a lot of the hockey yeah, guys there. They're, they're interesting very, guys. They're very different than baseball players, and baseball players are extremely different than football players. We can talk about that, too. That's actually really Baseball it. players are quirkier. Football players are – because base, baseball, you're traveling so much, and you're in place to place. They are curious, two right? completely different people, and I'll, I'll explain why going back to, your, to your, your, your former question. I did. I covered the Yankees for seven years. Then once I won the World Series in 2009, mm -hmm. my agent was like jen you have to pick up a second sport yeah it's 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 all baseball right and at that point the economy was tanking and people were saying well you know what can she do when baseball season's over my agent was like uh off-season baseball doesn't work that way no so i went to baltimore i sucked it up i covered the crappy orioles but i got to cover the ravens which Ew. was oh ravens. god it was the greatest experience of my Hate the career. Ravens. The Ravens are the former Cleveland Browns, love which them. I do not like. I loved it. Sorry. It, it was the greatest. It was the now greatest. We're fighting. It was the best two two years I ever spent in sports. Right. Covering the Ravens. So I learned football. Uh, and I got to see the difference between baseball players and football players, and there's no comparison. But we will get back to that. We'll talk about hockey players and baseball players and football players when we come back. We're also going to talk to Steve Conroy. Uh, Beat reporter for the Bruins as the Bees get ready to play the St. Louis Blues, right? Is that who yes, they are? Tonight yes, at seven. <laughs> at tonight the garden. at the Garden. Back with you after this short break. Talk is back. This is Boston Herald Radio. Are you looking for a great deal on a new Subaru? Metro West Subaru on Route 9 East in Natick is your place to find them. They have the all-new redesigned 2014 Foresters. They're available now. They also have 0% financing on all leftover models. Metro West Subaru has the largest pre-owned Subaru inventory in the Metro Boston area with over 30 certified Subarus in stock. Check them out today. You won't be disappointed. Do what I did. Check out Metro West Subaru, Route 9 East Natick, and as always, expect the best at Metro West. More leads, more meetings, and more satisfied customers. You want that, and we can help. I'm Butch Stearns from the Pulse Network. We help companies grow their business through their website with content marketing. Build a strong online presence by humanizing your brand and telling better stories. When you create, curate, and distribute compelling content, you'll get searched by more of the right people. Let's talk about how content marketing can work for you. Just go to thepulsenetwork.com slash herald. That's thepulsenetwork.com slash herald to learn more. Boston Herald Radio. Call or text with your opinion at 617-286-8818. Morning Meeting with Jacqueline Cashman and Hilary Chabot. Keep Chris Cassidy on the phone. The next step for Suffolk Downs is they're basically going to leave East Boston behind and say, and they're going to embrace Revere, which is the city that embraced them, and they're going to try to cobble together some way to make this happen in their oh. 52 or 53 acres that they have in Revere. They have the Wonderland uh, Greyhound uh, track as well, so they're going to try to put something together that way. Obviously, the question is, is there enough time to do this? They have a long way to go. This was a David and Goliath story, uh, yeah. you know, last uh, yesterday with them being Goliath. They are now the underdogs in this race. If they really want to scramble, I guess they could not only uh, put out a new proposal, but as soon as they do that, try and set the election ASAP and try and get it in under the wire. But December 31st is coming up quick, man, and that's, I mean, it really does seem pretty grim, I think. Morning meeting Nine to noon. on Boston Herald Radio. There's a list of people waiting to claim their share of over $2 billion in unclaimed property, like forgotten bank accounts, stock certificates, payroll and refund checks, or insurance proceeds. One in ten people have unclaimed property and don't even know it. Find out if you're on the list. Visit findmassmoney.com or call the Mass State Treasury 1-888-344-MASS. Find yours and claim your share. When you've got a dirty job, you need a dirty girl. You need Dirty Girl Disposal. Let Dirty Girl Disposal and their fleet of trucks haul away your trash, debris, and waste. Whether you've got a work site, a job site, or just a house full of junk, Dirty Girl will be there to get dirty and get the job done. And if you've ever had a trash hauler miss a run or leave a mess and couldn't get them on the phone to fix the problem, there's always a Dirty Girl ready to take your call. Hi, this is your Dirty Girl. And the best part? Dirty Girl has the lowest prices around. You can have Dirty Girl's great service, fun attitude, and reliability. And save money, too. 
So whether your current waste company is unreliable, overpriced, or just plain butt ugh, hey, make the change to Dirty Girl Disposal. Call 877-321-3003. That's 877-321-3003. Or visit DirtyGirlDisposal.com. That's DirtyGirlDisposal.com. Because nobody does it like a dirty girl. High Noon with Joe Battenfeld and Howie Carr. Tom Menino, I think he took some shots at the Herald in that press conference. Oh, did he? The TV reporter said something about, oh, your favorite paper. I'm just quoting your favorite paper. And he goes, oh, you mean the one that doesn't use verbs? I was, I assume he's talking about the Herald. That's the old Bulger line. Yeah. It's like oh, 30 yeah, yeah. years old. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, the, the paper that doesn't use verbs from the mayor who uh, doesn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Aerotech splitting the uprights. You know those phenomenons in football right now, uh, those wide receivers? Receivers out there, the uh, Joe Grabowski, Glenn Sweckler. High noon. Wednesdays at noon on Boston Herald Radio and BostonHerald.com. All right. We'll get back to the relationship talk. This is fun. Yeah. Yeah, I like you better than Meter. And I say that, I do actually, I say that about everybody who comes in, and I'm lying because I love Meter. Yeah. But this time I'm telling the truth. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm flattered. Thank you very yeah. much. Meter's awesome. He's right now, he's with his Uncle Morty walking around. I keep calling him <laughs> Uncle Morty. It's Monty, but <laughs> Morty was, sounds better. Why is he with his uncle? Because he's in uh, New York for oh, a PC Oh, so that's he's, right. That's right. He's, that's uh, right. he's traveling that's around right. looking for a, a nice Reuben. That's right. I have to uh, text him some restaurants, which he won't go to. Now, have you eaten with him? Yes. I know we have to do this interview. You, it's, it's an experience. Yeah, he's disgusting. No, he, he's, it's kind of like having... like A child. A, yes. Yeah. It's crap everywhere. He, he needs a bib. Yeah. And, and he orders like... Cup. Like when we were in North Carolina, he ordered Mr. Pib. Like we're like, can I get... I'm like, can I get glasses? I'm like, can I have a vodka? Can I get yeah. a wine? He's like, can I get a Mr. Pib? I look at him like, seriously? What's a Mr. Pib? It's like Dr. Pepper down in the South. I, I look at him he's like and I'm child. like, I give him the old... Meter, seriously, can you just order a glass of wine? Does this look like an adult? No, no, no. no he's not an adult. Yeah. <laughs> he's not an adult. But we will talk to an adult right now. Nice. And that is, <laughs> thank God, that is Steve Conroy, uh, our beat reporter for the Bruins here at the Herald. Steve, how are you? I'm doing well, guys. How are you? We're good. Meter's not here with, today. I've, eat, I've eaten with Meter, too. And, uh, yeah, you're right. He's a child. He's like a ch- he needs like a sippy cup and a bib. <laughs> He doesn't exactly know how to rip it up. No, right. no, no, no. There's food everywhere. He's nasty. And he carries Necco wafers with him, too. Did you guys know that? <laughs> okay, Steve, we're in... No, I don't know about Necco wafers, but we were walking down the hallway of the Herald, and he was reaching into his jacket pocket and, like, eating Skittles. And I was like, what are you doing? He has, like, candy that's not in wrappers in his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody over the age of like fourteen should eat Skittles. Should they? <laughs> they're, they're in his dirty pocket. They have like lint on it. He's disgusting. He is disgusting. All right, let's get to the Bruins. St. Louis Blues in town tonight. Point twenty three goal differential for that team. Uh, talk a little bit about the Blues and what the biggest challenge will be for the Bruins tonight. Well, uh, the biggest challenge might might come from within. You know that down uh, both Dennis Seidenberg and Adam McQuaid. Uh, Kevin Miller will be making his uh, NHL debut, and it's going to be a tough team to uh, to make his debut against. Yeah. Um, the Blues are a big, tough, strong team, very much like the Bruins themselves, and this is going to be a, be a great challenge for them. Okay, so you mentioned Seidenberg and McQuaid. Both officially out, Seidenberg with the lower body and, and McQuaid with the groin? That is correct. Okay. They never said exactly what... what uh, what McQuay's injury is, but uh, uh, but yeah, it certainly looked like that. Okay, Kevin Miller, University of Vermont standout, uh, up from Providence. Uh, what kind of playing time will we see from him? And a- any scouting report on this kid? Uh, well, he's he's you know a, a tough stay at home kind of defenseman. Um, so I, I, I'm assuming they're going to look for as simple a game as possible from him. Um, in the morning skate, he was uh, he was paired with Tory Krug, so I imagine that's going to be the uh, the third pair tonight. So I'm probably expect anywhere between eight and twelve minutes for him. Bruins have a big challenge here with Alexander Steen. Obviously, he's having a great year uh, for the for the Blues. You expect Bergeron's line to match up with him, um, or do you kind of just kind of let the Bruins just play their system versus him? What do you think? 
I think that uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they went with a with a, uh, a matchup like that, um, just because uh, on the back end they're uh, they're challenged without without uh, Seidenberg and McQuaid. So I wouldn't be shocked if they did match Bergeron's line with him. That that is a is a great possibility. Uh, speaking of uh, not of Bergeron, uh, taking a look at Brad Marchand demoted again to that fourth line. What what is going on with him? Is it just inconsistent play? Uh, is there anything that, that 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 they can do besides demote him to the fourth line? Uh, you know, I I don't know. Um, yeah. At this at this point, it's it's a, it's more than you know him needing a, a kick in the behind because yeah. he knows it's not not working for him right now. Um, He's doing fine in the offensive zone. I think he's just he's just giving the puck away uh, far too often at, at both blue lines, and and that that can be death in, in the NHL. Talking to Steve Connor here, beat reporter for the Bruins at the Herald. Bruins have won six of their last seven. Some of those games they should have lost. One being against New York. How great has Tuukka Rask been, particularly in that game? Is he just obviously the savior for this team so far? Yeah, yeah, he was he was great in that game. Uh, not so great in the Ottawa game, and and against Ottawa, which is a which is a low average team right now. You saw you know what what can happen to this team if they don't get very good goaltending. Yeah, um, he was not good that night, um, but neither was anybody else in front of him. And uh, and they they definitely have to pick up their play. They won. It's, it's amazing. They've won six or seven, and they're at the top of the Eastern Conference right now. And it still doesn't feel like they're they're close to playing to their potential. Yeah, very true. Um, taking a look at this team in general, and, and this is kind of a broad question, but I, in my opinion, I think a lot of people feel this way. Hockey is one of the best live sports to watch. What is it like to watch that first line play, especially when they're at full strength? Uh, I'm sorry, Jim, but Zamboni just decided to start up. <laughs> two seconds ago. Well, jump on it, jump on it. Such a great question, too. You just like, oh. I dare, I dare you to jump on it and take a ride. I dare you. <laughs> uh, I was you just ta- about the first line. I was just talking about the first line, how for me, I mean, I think most people feel this way. Hockey, especially the NHL, is the best live sport to watch. Basketball, pff, stinks. Football, better on TV. Baseball, watching grass grow. But when you go to a hockey game, sorry, sorry. When you go to a hockey game, it's the best live sport. So this is just a basic a question what is it like to watch that 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 first offensive line play live every night it's got to be quite exciting to cover a team with a great first line like that yeah yeah it's uh, they haven't had uh, a couple of great couple of games these past few games but uh, early in the season up until maybe about a week ago they've, they've been just dominant david Krejci has you know is, is having one of his best seasons so far <laughs> excuse me jerome mcginley even though he's not scoring like they they would hope him that he will score at some point. He's he's been involved in Milan Lucic is, is has been pretty pretty much stellar for almost every game this year. So I have a question on Ken Hitchcock. Guy's been coaching forever. Yeah. He's coached everyone, I think, mm-hmm. in the NHL. You know, he's kind of brought a different mindset to the St. Louis team. They've really you know they're fourth what fourth in the NHL in points, I believe. Um, yeah. What yeah. Is, but like besides Steen, there's not they're not a lot of household names. So what what do, what do we we expect to see from like this St. Louis team? Who are some maybe guys that fly under the radar that we don't know about? Cause you don't hear a lot about the Blues, although they're having a very successful year. Not a lot of household yeah. names. Yeah, well, well, they've got some uh, some pretty good names on the back end uh, with uh, Alex Peter Angelo and uh, Jay Bolmeister. Um, but there's one guy who's, who who kind of epitomizes what what the. Uh, you know what the, the blue stands for right now um, is a guy who used to used to wear black and gold. Vladimir Sabatka. He's a tough guy. He yeah, plays bigger than his five foot ten, two hundred pound frame. Uh, you know would suggest, and uh, he's just a hard, gritty player and tough to play against. And that's what this team is. Basically, so you're saying the Bruins are going to be looking themselves in the mirror tonight when this goes down, huh? Pretty much. Yeah, Pretty much. Not, I mean, you, you described the description of all these guys kind of fit to a T, everyone that the Bruins have on there. 
Um, I have yeah. one on the, uh, on the on the Bruins. Obviously, play. I you, you mentioned this again. Not scoring a lot this year, but noticing the impact that he's had on that line. That first line, it, it seems to be Krejci seems to have more of his legs this year. I mean, granted, it was a sh you know the shorter season and all, but it seems that Aginla kind of fits well in the kind of the skill and the skating with there. Was Horton was more of a bigger kind of brooding kind of guy. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I, I think that. Yeah, again, it has been a, a really good replacement for Horton because they're basically, you know, two straight line players uh, with with you know decent speed, um, and they both play a, a big game. Um, but I, I think again, you, you see the, the you know the, the playmaking ability he has, and the fact that you know he doesn't so far he hasn't had that you know fluctuation in play the way that um, they dealt with with, with Nathan Horton. Um, he could be great as he usually was in big important games but that he would also disappear for a couple of weeks at a time so i think that's a that's a plus all right steve Carnor right here beat reporter for the bruins at the boston herald that's all we got for you you're off the hot seat bud <laughs> all right. watch out thanks, for that steve. zamboni thanks for your time enjoy the game tonight okay guys take right, it easy take care that is steve conroy here at the boston herald talking some bruins we'll be back after this short break Boston Herald, bostonherald.com, Boston Herald Radio. Here in the Boston Herald web desk, running down our top commented stories today, readers are piling into the headline, Ryan Hannigan might catch on with the Red Sox, a story of what the team is doing at the catcher position, where free agent Jared Saltalamacchia is looking for a three-year contract, one the Red Sox might not be willing to sign. Reporter Scott Lauber says that Cincinnati Reds catcher Ryan Hannigan fits the profile of what the Sox are seeking, a defense-oriented stopgap to play 90 to 100 games next season in tandem with veteran backup David Ross, while strong-armed 23-year-old Christian Vasquez continues to mature at AAA. Lauber also points out that Hannigan grew up in Andover and was teammate with Ross for parts of two seasons in Cincinnati, where he played an average of 88 games in 2009. Mongo Melty had this to say on the speculation. Hannigan would be a huge defensive upgrade over Salty. I think his career caught stealing percentage is over 40%. The question is, can he start hitting again like he used to? And in response to the Herald's report on the evaluations of Boston public school teachers and criticism by the teachers' union that view you were discriminatory and biased, Screaming Eagle commented, when you have some third-year teachers who go off to the principal program where you're doing 30-year veterans, you're going to have some age bias. Not the teachers, the kids, the kids, and their lack of parental support. For the latest, for the latest on these and other stories, go to Boston Herald on our front of our free sports and news app. News app, a copy of today's Herald and Time Time Enforcement, the Boston Boston Herald Traffic Traffic Report. Things are things are nice, nice in Boston. Sam's Sam was saying, John and John guys have died the last time and then we're on. But it'll be mild, 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 and of course, for more weather information, go to heraldweather.com. For Boston Herald Radio, I'm Mark Reginald. When you've got a dirty job, you need a dirty girl. You need Dirty Girl Disposal. Let Dirty Girl Disposal and their fleet of trucks haul away your trash, debris, and waste. Whether you've got a work site, a job site, or just a house full of junk, Dirty Girl will be there to get dirty and get the job done. And if you've ever had a trash hauler miss a run or leave a mess and couldn't get them on the phone to fix the problem, there's always a Dirty Girl ready to take your call. Hi, this is your Dirty Girl. And the best part? Dirty Girl has the lowest prices around. You can have Dirty Girl's great service, fun attitude, and reliability. And save money, too. So whether your current waste company is unreliable, overpriced, or just... Just plain butt up. Hey! Make the change to Dirty Girl Disposal. Call 877-321-3003. That's 877-321-3003. Or visit DirtyGirlDisposal.com. That's DirtyGirlDisposal.com. Because nobody does it like a dirty girl. I don't know how to love you. Don't miss.
miss the Ultrasonic Rock Orchestra performing Jesus Christ Superstar at the Regent Theater in Arlington. Friday and Saturday, November 22nd and 23rd at 8 p.m. and Sunday, November 24th at 2 p.m. Dinner and a show is also available. Relive the rock opera that changed the world. Check out our website at www.regenttheater.com or call us at 781-646-4TICS for more details. Morning Meeting with Jacqueline Cashman and Hillary Chabot. Joining us now is Don Berwick. He is running for governor here in Massachusetts. When the president has had gone on, you know, months after months saying, if you like your coverage, you can keep it. Do you believe he was telling a lie? And when he was saying it, did you think that he was not being honest? Those policies are terrible policies. These people have had policies that do not provide them with coverage that they would when they need it. And yes, yeah, but Dr. Berwick, that's, that's not the point. Those are, that, that's not the point. Those are those people want those policies and they were told that, that they the could point. keep those policies so why were they told that they could keep the those policies country. we need to focus on the big picture here and that is let's, let's focus American on the promise let's focus on the promise well, hold on one second let's focus on the promise you said that they could keep their policies so now they let's can't keep their policies. Well, well, why, why not focus on that the president said it over and over and over again and asked us to focus on it on the campaign trail if you keep repeating that point about the president said you're distracting attention from the bigger picture for anyone to be focusing on that comment by the president to focus on that to attack the law is a misdirection do you wish he had used a better line when originally rolling this out to people in america focus on that issue as if it were somehow an achilles heel the entire effort is a big misdirection. Right. I don't want to focus on it, although, really, the president well, sort of... Focus on well, but the president highlighted the focus on it. He's the one who said it over and over. I do would like you to answer whether you think he should have used different language. I'm telling you, that's the wrong question. And I think... And why don't you answer I mean, it? Not you, but to use that point. I mean, I would like an answer. It doesn't sound like... I, I don't know if you have one. So again, if you could just answer the question, which we would really appreciate, is if you think different language should have been used. Yeah, I think, I think, frankly, I've answered your question. Morning meeting on Boston Hill Road. We have moved. Dick Doherty's Comedy Den is now located at 184 High Street below Howl at the Moon, across from Rose Wharf in the Financial District. We are Boston's only full-service comedy club. Show times are 7.30 p.m. every evening. Prices are $15 per person on Thursdays and $20 per person on Fridays and Saturdays. Open mic night every Sunday in Boston or join us at our other locations in Waltham, Worcester, and Methuen. Looking for a great way to make your private party or corporate event the one that everyone talks about? Look no further than Dick Doherty Comedy Productions. Call us at 1-800-401-2221. First there was the hitman, Johnny Moderano, then the rifleman, Stevie Flemmy. But no one terrorized the city of Boston for over two decades like James J. Whitey Bulger. Or as I call him in my new book about his trial, Rat Man. For years, Whitey would glare at me as I drove past the South Boston Liquor Mart, making it clear that I was on his bleep list. By the time he was arrested in 2011, it was well established that he was just a big, fat, rat. And now it's my turn to glare at him, even though the prolific snitch did everything he could to keep me out of the courtroom last summer. Ratman is my record of the Whitey Bulger trial, complete with never-before-heard witness testimony and shocking photographs of some of Bulger's grisly handiwork. You'll also get some priceless play-by-play of the Ratman himself lashing out at former associates in the courtroom. Get your edition of Ratman today. It's as easy as going to HowieCarshow.com or to your local bookstore. One more thing, Whitey always said that Christmas is for cops and kids. Prove him wrong by picking up a copy of Ratman today as a present for the avid reader in your household this Christmas. It's Ratman, the trial and conviction of Whitey Bulger. Buy online at HowieCarshow.com or in fine bookstores everywhere. Ratman. Boston Herald Radio. Call or text with your opinion at 617-286-8818. Come back. Catch your breath. Caught my breath. I ran outside. Katy Perry too, huh? That's Meter's favorite. Oh my. So, you know, there was something else I was thinking about in the elevator as I just ran outside. We've been making fun of Meter in the way he eats, the way he orders food, right. blah, 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 blah. So, can you imagine what he's like on Halloween? Oh, yeah, I did. I mean, seeing him in the, on the planes when we fly and stuff like that, they give candy there and he's... 
Oh, he's brokering deals to get candy. My God. I give him the peanut M and M's. That's oh, what I do. Oh my God! His like poor children. Happy. His poor children. He was saying that his kids didn't want to trick or treat anymore, and I said, yeah. "Well, that must have crushed you, right? Because you probably wanted to keep going." He's like, "Oh, I could have gone to all the houses." So I can only imagine that uh, meter was stealing his kids' food, his kids' candy behind his back. Yep. And I said to him, I said, having your wife must feel like she has three children. Yeah. Can you imagine being like, what do you want what do you want for dinner, John? I don't know, macaroni and cheese <laughs> with baby bunny meatballs inside. <laughs> Right? That's probably right. You know that to be That's true. Right. Now, you mentioned this before, and you said you're going to get back to it, and I want to know. So you said there's a difference in football, oh, no, baseball players, and what what do you think the difference is in that? Okay. Football players. Football players, to me, were, were very, as being a former one, um, were, were on the time schedule. Very, very fragmented very, and very... Very scheduled. Yes. Everything's this, very this, calculated. and this. Yep. Used to having someone tell us where, where and when we have to be. When we're off that, we're just like lost sheep you don't know walking around in the wilderness. Right. Well, I didn't know much about covering the NFL, obviously, until I started covering the NFL. Right. But with baseball, and I don't even know if you know this, but we personally, I'm probably one of the only media members to say this, we have way too much access. Way too much. Okay. So if the game starts at 7... Yep. The locker room opens at 3.30. Right. So, so sometimes you're in there before they even get there. Do you take some swings? Do you get in there? Do, do you not. Off, do a little soft toss? Unless I wanted to get fired. You're not allowed if to If I wanted that. to get fired, then I would certainly pick up a bat and start hitting some fungos for sure. Right. Um, now, can you throw? Can you catch? Like you're in athletic? general or at work? Well, in general. Yes, which is I'm kind of both. I'm very athletic. Really? Yeah, I throw tennis balls to my dog all the time. And they go very far. Right-handed or left-handed? Righty, okay. which means I'm not strange. There's nothing wrong with left-handed. Uh, left-handed people are awkward. Really? Yeah, they're quirky. Look at Meter. My son, my my son's, my oldest son's left-handed. He's not awkward. Well, then he's weird. Not weird. He will be weird. He's right-handed hockey shot, though. How about that? that okay, so he's ambidextrous. Amphibious. Dextrous. <laughs> ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. Nice. Is that right. it? It is ambidextrous. I was yes. right. You were Look close. At- you did it phonetically. You know I could see it going in you, your head. You know why? Because I get nervous. I get nervous it's going to be the wrong word, and then they're going to make a promo of it. They're going to cut the clip, and then they're going to run it as a commercial, a and I'm going to look stupid. It, it's oh, a lot stop. of pressure. We're laughing with you, not at you. Um, so, so baseball players, you have way too much access to them. Right. They travel way too much. Yes. Spring training, they're gone for usually eight weeks. Eight weeks. Yep. I have buddies that work with the Indians. And then they travel... The 162 games. Sometimes they're gone two weeks at a time, two days at a time, eight days at a time. So nomadic life instead of a scheduled regimented life like football guys. And there's something about baseball players, especially in their uniforms, where their their physique, their bodies are pretty. You know, you can tell if they have, and I'm not, I'm I'm speaking as a human being, not as a reporter. If I was a baseball fan and I was a female, you could see a baseball player and be like, oh, look at his tight bum or look at his stomach or they don't. How? They They wear those baggy pants. Football guys, it's like, I mean, look at the football guys. But you can't tell. I just think women are more attracted to baseball players than any other sport. You know why? I, I think they're more accessible, first of all. No. What? See their face. Okay. Well, you're their players, face, right? Okay. Football players are hidden behind a mask. J- just fo- right, J- but that's it. I mean, basketball and hockey players don't have masks on. Uh, girls love hockey players too. Girls love hockey players because yeah. they're badasses and they're missing teeth and they have tattoos. That's why. And there you have it. So baseball players are away from their families. They make way too much money. Their money is all guaranteed. Yep. They could break a leg and still yep. make fourteen million dollars. Um, and Good I union think, work. I think they're spoiled. They didn't have to go to college. They didn't get drafted out of college. They were drafted out of high school. Yeah, I know, but they have to go. You have to fight through the minor leagues. The minor leagues are difficult. I mean, it's think about this. If you're it. drafted but out of you're nineteen point. years they're old, they're not getting an education while they're fighting through the minor leagues. You're nineteen years old. You get an education to make money in life. Let's 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 really that's the that's the core. Which is why I don't care when I get words wrong. Right. Because I am street smart. I am not book smart, and I made go. it further in life than my friends who have graduated from Harvard. And there you have it. See? In their all face. About, it's all about Taste being it. able to work with other people. Right. It, it's how you relate to other is. people. Um, okay, it's funny. So then I start covering football. Right. Oh, my goodness. These poor guys are being carted off the field in training camp. Right. In 105-degree weather in Baltimore. Yeah. 
and complete opposite. Complete opposite. Baseball players go play golf. They hang out. Football players are just so dead they tired go after home double and sessions. Die. Yes, they legit want to go home and just die on their couch. Yes. Um, they would say to me, "Hey Jen, why don't you tell BJ Upton I'd love to stand in center field like this and catch a ball for twenty-three million bucks?" Right. And I would say to them. That I understand. However, you can't hit a 98 mile an hour fastball no. or a Barry Zito curveball. But these guys are breaking bones, they're getting concussions, that they're dealing with the aftermath of concussions yeah. when they're done playing in the NFL. Their money's not guaranteed. Nope. Um, they, ha they had to go to college. Mm -hmm. They had to get drafted out of college. They had to go to classes. They had to um, learn responsibility, not making a ton of money, going through, you know, Tennessee or you know all the colleges whatever right there, there was just there's so much there, they're just different people nothing was handed to them football players nothing was handed to them and as you said it's very very structured well the, yeah the two things with football is that very people, structured. people call football a contact sport it's not it's a collision sport that's one so it's very very physical but Unlike baseball, which is a team sport wrapped with an individual competition because mm -hmm. in essence it's the pitter right. pitcher sort of thing Football is 11 guys working together as a unit, having, they're so dependent on everybody else. Right. So you're, you're accountable. Your yeah. actions are accountable. So if baseball, you strike out, yeah, it stinks that you leave a guy on base. Right. But, but in football, if you screw up, someone gets like, hurt. Right. It wasn't a direct correlation to somebody's yeah. injury. Or, yeah. Uh, I thought, I think it's amazing that if the, if the Ravens play it on Sunday, Monday, you have a 20 minute press conference with Coach Harbaugh. Yeah. You don't see any players. You don't talk to any players. That's it. Yeah. Oh, Tuesday's an NFL off day. What yeah. do you know? Wait a minute. I just worked 20 minutes yesterday. Yeah. And now I have an off day? Okay. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday rolls around. You have one hour. Right. One hour in the locker room. Because you only have so many games in football. They're so precious. Amazing. Time one is precious. One hour with the, with the players. Now, on Wednesday, they just take five players and they walk them to a podium. Right. They take Joe Flacco, they take Ray Rice, they take Ed Reed, they take Haloti Nada, and they take uh, uh, Ray Lewis. Yeah. So you don't even have to fight for these guys in the locker room. You know what? They bring them to you. It's great. Thursday rolls around. Oh, it's coordinator day. You don't need the players. You just got them yesterday. So who right. do you talk to? Special teams, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Friday rolls around. One hour of open locker room. You get the coach and the players are... Playing music, they're dancing in the locker room. Friday's they're getting day. Friday's yeah. Friday fun day. Yep. Oh, on top of that, they give you pizza. The pizza party at the Ravens. Sounds like you like football. I thought oh, yeah, it was, you don't like the game. It was the stru no, I loved it, and I loved learning about the other team as much as the the team I was covering. Right. Over six days, then Saturday rolls around and you have nothing. Then Sunday rolls around, it's game day. No pregame uh, no. communication with the players. Got to have your mind right. It is just the most brilliant, structured sport for the media. Yep. It's perfect. I, see, you mentioned this earlier, and I don't know. I loved like, it. I love watching hockey live. It's, a, it's, a, it's something love, to really appreciate. Love, but love. football is something that, granted, the TV experience is great, how they do it now in HD and everything. Right. But you don't appreciate the speed and, Thank and you violence for saying of the that, game let me just because say that is true. So again, I don't mean to sound like an idiot, but in my first year covering football, now mm. I have been covering baseball for seven years. It's mm. very slow. Um, it's easy to follow. You can turn to the person next to you and ask them what happened, and they have time to explain it to you before the next play. Right. In football, you miss something, you're screwed. Yeah, you're done. You're, you're in the press box. You're watching the game. By the time I turned to my coworker and said, okay, can you explain that to me? Another play already happened. Another play already happened. You know all the penalties? Like, you know, yes. pass interference you know and what, what illegal... Tell you, what? And, and I'm actually proud to say this. I'm not embarrassed. I went to training camp to cover the Ravens, and I walked onto the field. I was in a new city. I did not know one media member. Uh -huh. I had met Joe Flacco once right. at, a, at an Orioles game. I did not know one player. I couldn't even tell if offense was white and defense was purple. I couldn't tell. Oh, boy. But I had been a baseball girl. Oh I got in my car after training camp. My, my radio station called me and said, Jen, can you do a live hit and talk about practice today? I said, I don't even know what I just watched. I have no idea. I could never, ever give you a report from camp today. And I started crying. And I thought to myself, 
you have so much work ahead of you, I'm not even sure one individual could absorb that much information. Scott, I went home, I took a block of paper yep. you know, that goes in a printer, yep. and I drew the circles. I drew the 4-4 four, three, three, four defense. Oh, wow. I nice. Drew, I, I drew all the formations, and I put the starting player in the circle, yep. and then the people who were on the bubble behind right. them, below the circle. That's the way to I do it. You build your own DAP charts. Studied right? their faces, studied their numbers. Uh -huh. I made Derek Mason draw me a route tree. You know the route tree. Nice. I knew the route What's the six route? I don't know. That, Come on. That was, that was three years ago. I made Derek Mason draw me a route tree. I studied the route tree. I studied their numbers and their faces. And then at that point, then I would, and I was like this at training camp. People Figuring are like, what, what is she doing? doing? What oh, is she doing? Man. She's like it's looking just... at her own papers. But you know what? I didn't give a crap who was looking at me. And you know, now when, you got it down. When I left two yeah. years later, John Harbaugh pulled me aside. He said, you came here. You were a sponge. You asked questions, you wanted to learn, right. and you weren't like some fluff, yeah, hanging out with the Ravens. I was right. like, I had no choice. But you know what I did do? I would pull aside Chuck Bogown and be like, Chuck, I don't understand this. Can you please take two seconds and explain it to me? And he would be like, you know what? The fact that you are admitting that you don't know it right. is so much better than every know-it-all dude in this room. You oh, know? Yeah, guys. And I would say to guys Ray Guys love Rice, to know everything about I would about say, Ray, the, 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 the B gap, he, uh, he'd be like, all right, Jen, ready? Yep. When you, yep. And he, he yep. Ray Rice explained it all to me, and I didn't. I didn't. Feel I take stupid. all that stuff for granted when I watch. My wife does not enjoy watching the games with me because I'm very tech. I'm not very you, you technical, be, right? but I know a lot what's going on before it happens, right. so I can watch a play and, right. and, and break it down and see certain things. And that's it the can other be thing. kind of annoying. And I'm so glad you just said that yeah. because I'll never know as much as you. Sorry. Right. No matter how. Sometimes that's a curse, though. It, no, it's very. You true. can't enjoy the game as no much. No matter you get how angry. much I study. No matter how many questions I ask, you're always going to have one up on me. Now I know what a flea flicker is, a cover two. You know, like I nice. didn't, but you know what? I had. To, I was like Dante Stallworth. I don't get this. What does this mean? <laughs> and he would be like, you know what? He would sit down and explain it to me. At least and you ask. Most people don't ask. They just most choose to think either exactly. they don't want to know. They're blissfully ignorant. Or they don't want to. They w don't want people to know they don't know. Yeah, or they're afraid that to be wrong. I didn't give a crap because you know what? They would be like, yo, what up, baseball girl? Got any <laughs> and they would say to me, yeah. hey, what happened in last night's game? What does that mean? I'm like, well, that's a balk. So when the pitcher and I would right. explain baseball, and it was just, it was. It's amazing how many football guys have no clue about baseball. No clue. Yeah, they don't know. I'll anything. throw them under the bus. Dante Stallworth asked me how many outs were in an inning. Well done. How many outs are in an inning? Well, it's, do you did know? You, did you give it to him? Well, you know it's six. Right. Most okay. people say three. Most people say That's three. The half inning question. is three. Yeah. But uh, it was, you know, it was the World Series, and it would be November, and we're, I'm in there, like, and they would be like, oh, my God, last night's game, explain this to me. And I was like, all right, well, this guy and this guy don't like each other. He used to play for this team. Oh, my God. And we would, really? like, trade so you, information. So you brought in the drama of it as it well. It was so fun. It was, you know what, if you go in there like a know-it-all, you just end up, just another one of them. You know what? If you try to be a zero, if you try to be a hero, you know what he end up being? Oh, man. A zero. A zero. All well right. Done. Wow. Scott Mutra and Jen Royal. That one. Knock that one Back out of the park. with you after this short break. <laughs> See? Boston Herald Radio. Hey, Boston Radio refugees. You're home now. Are you looking for a great deal on a new Subaru? Metro West Subaru on Route 9 East in Natick is your place to find them. They have the all-new redesigned 2014 Foresters. They're available now. They also have 0% financing on all leftover models. Metro West Subaru has the largest pre-owned Subaru inventory in the Metro Boston area with over 30 certified Subarus in stock. Check them out today. You won't be disappointed. Do what I did. Check out Metro West Subaru, Route 9 East Natick, and as always, expect the best at Metro West. Boston Herald Radio. Call or text with your opinion at 617-286-8818. As one of the Boston Herald's weekly blog contributors, Rafi Salon and Day Spa is best known for our highly talented staff and comfortable, eco-friendly atmosphere. We are a full-service salon located on Newbury Street, offering hair, skin, nail, and makeup services while being respectful of the earth and leading the way as Boston's first eco-friendly salon. Our passion for curly hair and natural texture has made us Boston's curly-haired experts and the only Weed Out certified salon in the area. We are dedicated to making you look and feel your very best. When you've got a dirty job, you need a dirty girl. 
You need Dirty Girl Disposal. Let Dirty Girl Disposal and their fleet of trucks haul away your trash, debris, and waste. Whether you've got a work site, a job site, or just a house full of junk, Dirty Girl will be there to get dirty and get the job done. And if you've ever had a trash hauler miss a run or leave a mess and couldn't get them on the phone to fix the problem, there's always a Dirty Girl ready to take your call. Hi. This is your Dirty Girl. And the best part? Dirty Girl has the lowest prices around. You can have Dirty Girl's great service, fun attitude, and reliability. And save money, too. So whether your current waste company is unreliable, overpriced, or just plain butt up, hey, make the change to Dirty Girl Disposal. Call 877-321-3003. That's 877-321-3003. Or visit DirtyGirlDisposal.com. That's DirtyGirlDisposal.com because nobody does it like a dirty girl. It's 3 a.m. and you can't sleep, so don't lose another week. Just lose the matches. Right now at Sleepy's, get great Black Friday deals. Save up to 70% on every mattress in the store. With mattress sets starting at $199. Get a Beautyrest Queen set for just $499. And a free 32-inch HD TV with select models. And we can make Sleepies, the mattress professionals, making the world a better place to sleep. Morning meeting with Jacqueline Cashman and Hillary Chabot. I thought a lot of people last night were assuming that Suffolk was going to win by a small margin. Although in the end, it wasn't even close. It was like a total blowout. And it's crazy to think that the millions of dollars that Suffolk spent to try to get out the support. It and is they've had years to do that. And really, the decision at the 11th hour to drop Caesar is because of the Gaming Commission's report uh, put Suffolk in a terrible position. Mm. Morning meeting on Boston Health. Radio. Boston Herald Radio. Heavy on the talk. Light on the commercials. It's 3 a.m. and you can't sleep. So don't lose another week. Just lose the matches. Right now at Sleepy's, get great Black Friday deals. Save up to 70% on every mattress in the store. With mattress sets starting at $199. Get a Beautyrest Queen set for just $499. And a free 32-inch HD TV with select models. And we can make you a choice. Sleepy's, the mattress professionals, making the world a better place to sleep. More leads, more meetings, and more satisfied customers. You want that, and we can help. I'm Butch Stearns from the Pulse Network. We help companies grow their business through their website with content marketing. Build a strong online presence by humanizing your brand and telling better stories. When you create, curate, and distribute compelling content, you'll get searched by more of the right people. Let's talk about how content marketing can work for you. Just go to thepulsenetwork.com slash herald. That's the PulseNetwork.com slash Herald to learn more. We have moved. Dick Doherty's Comedy Den is now located at 184 High Street below Howl at the Moon, across from Rose Wharf in the Financial District. We are Boston's only full-service comedy club. Show times are 7.30 p.m. every evening. Prices are $15 per person on Thursdays and $20 per person on Fridays and Saturdays. Open mic night every Sunday in Boston or join us at our other locations in Waltham, Worcester, and and Methuen. Looking for a great way to make your private party or corporate event the one that everyone talks about? Look no further than Dick Doherty Comedy Productions. Call us at 1-800-401-2221. The year is almost over, but 495 Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram is going out big. It's the Big Finish event. Big savings, big selection, big finish. Choose from over 100 new Rams in stock. Save up to $10,000 on a new Ram 1500 Crew Cab 4x4. Big savings, big selection. Don't miss the Big Finish event. See all our low and upfront pricing online at 495ram.com or visit us at 495 Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Lowell. Enjoy the convenience of home delivery of the Boston Herald every day of the week. And, for those on-the-go days, receive the Herald's Digital Edition at no cost. The Herald's Digital Edition is an exact replica of the print edition, including every story, photo, and sales and special offers from our advertisers. Available on the device of your choice every morning. Plus, share articles by email, blog, or social networks, and access archives. How's that for convenient? Go to bostonherald.com slash subscribe to sign up. That's bostonherald.com slash subscribe to sign up now. 
Roger Berkowitz from Legal Seafoods here. I'm sure you've heard the adage, fish is brain food. So be smart and eat more. And get other healthy eating tips at the Boston Herald's Forklift, a blog for food, fun, and drink. Todd Pressman here on the Boston Herald web desk. From the breaking news bar, a Danvers High School freshman was indicted on charges of murder, rape, and armed robbery in the killing of a beloved math teacher at that town's high school. The Essex County Grand Jury this afternoon handed down indictments against 14-year-old Philip Chisholm in the October 23 murder of Colleen Ritzer. No further details were released in the case. A UMass Dartmouth freshman today posted bail after he was charged with leaving the scene of a fatal accident. 18-year-old Eric Megna allegedly struck Michael Dutra, father of two, on October 11 in Middleborough and then drove to his family's home in New Hampshire, according to prosecutors. Megna was released today on $10,000 cash bail. For the latest on these and other stories, go to bostonherald.com, check out our free sports and news apps, or pick up a copy of today's Herald. I'm Todd Pressman, and that's the Boston Herald Web Traffic Report. Locally overnight in Boston, skies will cloud up. Temperatures in the 30s and low 40s. Warmest weather downtown. And tomorrow, a lot of clouds to end your work week. There could be a sprinkle or a shower. No big deal. It'll be mild. Upper 40s, low 50s. Saturday, mostly cloudy, becoming windy. We'll start in the mid-40s. Flurries, snow squalls will knock temperatures down by dark. Then very strong northwest winds and bitter cold air for Saturday night and Sunday. Gear up. For more weather, go to heraldweather.com. For Boston Herald Radio, I'm Mark Resenthal. Boston Herald Radio. Finally, listener-friendly radio. Imagine that. Boston Herald Radio. Now it's time for Sports Town with John Mita Perel and Jen Royal. All right. Big game in Foxborough. Sunday. Sunday night. I'm so glad we're turning the page. Both times. Yeah, you got to, I mean, it's only so many games. You got to regroup. It's ridiculous. You've been talking about this damn call yeah. for, since it happened. Well, I was telling Christian earlier, the call that really upset me was the one they called on McCourty. Oh. Uh, which was terrible. It was, a, it, was a, it, was, it was a Euro flop call by Greg Olson, what he did there. It was there. horrendous. It was and terrible. I'm not a Devin McCourty fan. Well, I, I, he's gotten better, but he kind of makes my head explode. Yeah. So when I saw that happen, I was like, boy, McCourty, like, way to go. And then I watched it again, and I was like, wait. A minute, I take that back, McCordy. Yeah, what a like fraud not, move! It was terrible. Fraud move. It's a oh. Euro soccer dive, one of those things. You know, it's just terrible. Come terrible. on, be better than that. Oh, and look. then if you're going to call that, you got to call the end. So let's just we're just we're going to give us five seconds. The call should have been called. Wasn't called. If you're going to call that on McCordy, you're going to have to call, call that no matter what. But end somebody else was saying, Christian, who was saying the other day that Gronk didn't sell it enough? He didn't. He didn't sell it enough. But you know what? That's not, that's not his job to sell. Right, some not, guys do, right. some don't. But that's right. it. End of story. Right. Let's move on. Okay. So. Denver's coming in. Does Walker play? I think he does. I think uh-huh. there's no way he is not getting on that field. But he didn't practice yesterday. Neither I don't know Manning. about today. We'll talk to Manny didn't ne- practice nope yesterday with the either. Angle. Yeah, we'll talk to Jeff Howe at 515. He'll give us a complete rundown. But, I mean, I. Listen, it's so funny. How, like, fans in Boston, Patriots fans are like, yeah, Welker better play. They can't wait for Welker to come back. But if you're really a Pats fan, you don't really want Welker to play. Yeah, he's, he's done phenomenal. He's done. I mean, he's incredible. Now, he's, he's, obviously, he's, he's obviously going to get cheered. Correct. Listen, this is why I think so. I think he's going to get a huge cheer because uh-huh. it wasn't his choice. He didn't want to leave. Well, I mean, it was his choice. The Patriots didn't, didn't offer money. He took the money. They didn't. But they were they were treating him unfairly. Hey, yeah, it's a business. They ain't show All friends; it's show business. No, I know. You know what I mean? He had I to know, he had to go where, where he gets to play with another okay. you know another great quarterback. He's on pace for a hundred catches this season. It's the norm. Um, industry he left New for England him. with the all-time reception leader, mm-hmm. six hundred and seventy-two. Yep. Um, after six seasons with New England. Yep. This there is no reason. No reason why the Patriots shouldn't have kept him unless they were that upset about the dropped passes in the Super Bowl. Uh, who knows? I mean, it could have been some of that. I think it, it was, had to have I been I think personal. it's a little bit, I think it's kind of, when you're six years and it's, you know, there's a lot of things that build up. I'm sure there was, maybe they thought he missed some balls. 
Maybe they didn't think it was worth the money. Maybe they knew he'd taken a lot of hits. Not worth the money. And they it, gave Chad Ochocinco six million dollars. They have. A, he didn't do jack. I know, but that's what they have. They have it in there. You know, they have what is someone's worth at what a certain age they're willing to take. You know, a certain amount of money is spent on. You don't on think this. he was worth it? I thought they should have kept him. I thought they should have kept him. Yeah. I mean, it's. You, you can understand why why they they didn't they get they got what they thought was a younger younger version of him with Danny Amendola mm -hmm. although Danny Amendola's obviously had some issues struggling to Injuries, stay healthy yeah. but you know maybe they just thought West was a like a, a hit away from just like kind of being done but I don't know now excuse my ignorance I'm having a blurred um, check we moment yes Welker was gone before Hernandez went to jail yes. Yes. Okay. So it wasn't like, hey, listen, we lost Aaron Do you Hernandez think he does? Do you think if Walker scores, he does the Hernandez dance in the end zone? <laughs> I mean, what if that happens? Would um, Aaron Hernandez immediately well, put know, a hit out on th him? This is what I'm jail? saying. I, I'm kind of looking forward to watching Welker play here. It's great watching him play. I mean, he's, he's, he's a little punk. He's a little like, punk. Yeah, they're, but there's, it's, he's a little, he's got, Boston people can relate to Wes Welker. hundred The underdog. He's one of us. He's like, I played with Wes Welker in the yes. playground. Like, exactly. this guy was awesome. Totally. He could move and he could catch totally. and he was great. Short he's just guy, like Welker. Short guy. Right. Uh, you know, has the. Gritty. He's uh, hard. Wears his heart on his sleeve. He's overcompensating for his size Short by man, being Napoleon a complex. Right, by being right. a tough punk. I mean, right. I I mean, we listen, Wes Wilker's one of the most loved athletes to come through here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as well. I mean, he, he's a guy that leave everything out there for mm -hmm. the Patriots oh, no, and for sure. uh, it's going to be I'm sure it's going to be emotional for him. I mean, cuz him and Brady no are very question. tight. I think it's no going to be emotional question. for Brady as well. Um, you know, Tom does a really good job in front of the cameras as to making things, you know, on schedule. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. He's he's got the camera mode down, which you know that's that's his right. that's his public persona. And right. Kudos to him for it. Um, but I think deep down he's you know there, it's going to be a moment for him where he's going to be like, man, I, I really miss I'm having sure. that guy. Regardless of how how well Denver's doing. Right. You know. Yeah, it's selfish. Different. It's all it's about different. us. I QBs. Mean, winning, that's how we are. Winning the Super Bowl. That's right. Winning the Super Bowl, Bowl with Denver. I mean, of course, you're with your team all year. It's it's an amazing, emotional, terrific moment. But there's something about winning with New England. There's something about winning in Boston here. It's a little bit different. In fact, when 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 Napoli was signing here, and I've told this story before, uh, he was thinking about going to Seattle because he wanted to hit cleanup. And I was like, right. Mike, I'm telling you right now, you are not going to enjoy Seattle. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to make this amount of money. I'm going to hit cleanup. It's going to be great. And I was like, no, you know why it's not going to be great? I'm going to tell you why. Because you're not going to have the Bruins, you're not going to have the Celtics, and you're not going to have the Patriots. There's right. something about Boston, I'm telling you, you are going to find yourself to be a Boston fan. Right. They win the Super Bowl. I mean, they win the World Series, and where's Mike? Mike Shirtless, Mike. smoking a grit. Yes. Awesome. And then, and then he's at the Bruins game, and then he's at the Celtics game. Yeah. And I think that's something you know, cities like Denver, do, they yeah. don't have. Winners here are yeah. remembered forever. Forever. They're legendary. Forever. As long as you win here, you're good. And I mean, it's you don't even have to play your whole career here. You nope. have your moment. Dave nope. Roberts. Exactly. Kevin Millar. Like, that, think about all these guys that today. That stolen base will be his claim to fame till the day he right. dies. So but that's that's the thing. Wes Walker will always be. Always. I think he'll be loved. He's going to get cheered. I, it's I it's more of a like anti so. anti Bill. I sort think of so. Thing. I totally agree with you. I could not agree more. If he had his choice, he would have stayed. Right. You know, they were they were low balling him. Well, he did it for a couple of years, him. for two years without getting the multi year yeah, deal, and I he know. played. He signed the con he yep. signed the tender the year before. Yep. Which you he know, always him, played for less money here. He was plays hard. He leaves it all out there. There's no, there's no questioning Wes Walker's effort. No. You know, and that's the thing that most I people in Boston. I'm excited to see him play. Well, that's the thing. Boston sports fans are are very knowledgeable, Extremely. and they're very perceptive. So they yeah. know if someone's dogging it, and they know if someone's Completely. just getting by on skills. Right. And they appreciate mm -hmm. and respect mm -hmm. and admire the guys mm -hmm. that they see getting the most 100%. out of everything. That's 100%. why Pedroia loved, right? Uh, of course. Loved. And Larry you know, Bird, not the most, you know, Larry Legend is not the most, <laughs> will, will not be known as the most athletic no, NBA player, no. but was got the most out of everything that he did. Balls to the wall. Right. Balls to the wall. Bobby Orr, tough. Yep. Could and skill the got wall. the most out of everything, right? Um, which is why a lot of people don't love Manny Ramirez because he dogged yeah. a lot of games. Even though Manny was probably the most talented right-hand hitter of want, his generation. You don't give 100%. You want to dog stuff? 
Yeah, you're no, in, you're in I hear the crap you. hole. You're you're in the dog. Here house. you are. You're Some in the people dog are willing house. to let that go. Absolutely. And uh, I forgot what I was just going to say. I had one player in the in my the front of my head, and now I've completely lost my concentration. Um, How about the the Patriots know, are underdogs matter. this week at home against the Broncos? Well, nine and one. Yeah, but still, Wait, you're at home. I'm, a lot of injuries in the secondary. Well, for you the should Patriots. get what? You should get three points for home, even if it's an equal. Wow, game. nice! I'm impressed. You knew that. What? The really? Three point. The three point rule. Dude, I. I mean. Dude. Nice. I kind of know what I'm doing. Yeah. No, I didn't say you kind. I mean, that's that's not like a periphery thing. That's really? that's you an get in three depth thing. For home, I just I don't know. Yeah, well, you funny. get a lot of the cards, the gambling cards. When I had cards, my radio huh? show on EEI on Saturday, some yeah. guy called up and he was like, wow, he's like, you know, you really know what you're talking about. And I said... You know your sports lines. You I know said, how to gamby. Well, I, I should hope so. Well, no, I mean... If I but, didn't, I wouldn't but be that's sitting not, here. The gambling lines isn't knowing your job. That's not knowing cover two, inverting safeties, 4-3 oh, base defense. Well, that I is just, a gambling thing. I always thing. thought you got three points for being at home. You get an extra field goal. It's true. Yeah. It's true. That's that's it. That's a gambling thing. That's not a uh, that's not a football knowledge thing. Well, it is though because people think you have a better chance of winning at home. What do you mean? But that's gambling. That's for gambling. Purposes. Okay, the points are gambling, right. but in terms of people, you know, people think you have a better chance at home. Unlike baseball, they you know you don't really say, well, they have a better chance of playing at home. You don't right. really think about the baseball crowd getting into it. You don't really right. think about the basketball court. I mean, all the courts are the same. But when you talk about football, the home team usually has the advantage. Usually. Usually, that's usually how it goes. With right. That's what I meant by my Especially with the like point. in those domes and other land. surfaces, right? I wasn't even talking. Yeah, yeah, right. But with you inadvertently factor. brought that about. All right. It's all right. And no problem. So now you, you. So with the Ravens, so you 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 see all these other teams. Who is, um, what team did you loathe? With the Ravens? Yeah, like if you see them playing, like one of those teams that they come to town. And Nobody. Like, you know what? Like, I didn't have anything to do with the have, other teams. You don't have any nemesis NFL team that you just despise no. or dislike? No. Nope. Really? I don't like the, well, I don't the like Jets? the Giants. Are you laughing? I don't like the Giants. Why? No, no reason. Yeah. I don't like just, the Giants. You don't like the Giants? No. See, I like. The, I don't mind the Giants. I don't like the Giants. I don't mind the Giants. I, I don't really like the Jets. Um, I, 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 like the I, Jets I, I, I don't like of. Pitts puke. I don't like the Steelers. And I don't like... <laughs> And I don't like the Ravens because there used to be the well, Cleveland why? Browns. Because I'm from Cleveland, and oh, the Ravens okay. are the Cleveland oh, right. Browns. Before they were, before they were the Colts. No, the Baltimore Colts are the Colts. Colts. No, the Baltimore Colts. The Colts are the Colts. They're still the Colts. The Ravens were the Browns. Cleveland Browns moved to Baltimore, became the Baltimore Ravens. I know, but weren't they the Baltimore Colts? No, Did the I just Colts make are that the up? Colts. The Baltimore Colts left Baltimore to go to Indianapolis and still remain the Colts. What am I confused about then? Well, you think you, you got the cities and the moving things, but the, the franchises themselves. Okay. So, like the Baltimore Colts records. That I knew. The Baltimore Colts records. Right. Stay with the Indianapolis Colts because that is the same franchise. Okay. And then they went so to. So, Johnny Unitas' records, right. or whatever he has, stays with. You know who Johnny Unitas is, right? Uh, no. She doesn't? No, she does. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, those records stay with the Indianapolis Colts. The Baltimore Ravens records. Basically, it started from when they when they moved there from Cleveland. The Baltimore Colts, a National Football Team franchise founded in 1953, which relocated to Indianapolis in 1984. Go. So don't call me crazy. The Baltimore Colts. Yeah, but the Baltimore Colts are the Indianapolis Colts now. The Ravens were I the I know, but I'm just saying there was he's a saying team when, He's saying the when the Cleveland Browns moved to Baltimore, the Cleveland Browns were no more. It was a new team. Baltimore yeah. Ravens, new that stats and everything. That I knew because everything. everyone right. says that they took the team away. Right. Yeah. right. Literally took it away. Literally took it away. Right. It wasn't like they moved the franchise to Baltimore. I'm Thank not you. blonde. Not, a, no, the Browns stayed and didn't have a team for years. I wasn't explaining it as well, I guess. The Browns right. that's my bad. team for you years. Weren't, you weren't. I'll blame it on me. I'm I'm I got big shoulders. I'll take it. I'm going to blame it on you, too. Good. Let's do it that way. I want to blame it on you, too. When did the Browns get their team back? That was... 1999. 1999. It's never been the same, though. No. No. I liked the Ravens. I thought they were... Uh... Really? I didn't like Art Modell. Oh. Sorry. That's mean. He's dead. Yeah. Don't talk about yeah. dead people like that. Well, that, I'm sorry. It's the pact of life. It happens. Why didn't you like him? Because he took the Browns away from Cleveland. You need to get over it. So I don't get over things. I dwell. I'm a dweller. So why do you hate I'm the Ravens? Ponderer. They're totally. They're just a totally different team. They're not. They're not. They're still the Cleveland Browns. People always say that they hate the Ravens because I think they're like a bunch of pompous thugs, thugs. in the locker room. Yeah. 
says people who never worked in there. There you go. They says, were the kindest, hey, most lovely people. People say that about everyone. That's around. what we do. No, As I know. fans, we ridiculous. judge people. Do you know how many people hate me and have never met me? Oh, so listen to this. This is what I was thinking about doing. Oh, boy. This is going to no, get, this this like, get weird. No, this is legit. So um, I wanted to do this in Baltimore, but I was afraid I was like honestly going to die. So there are like um, three people in Boston who hate me. Okay. And I don't know who they hate? are. Hate? Like hate. I don't believe that. I mean, Kristen, you follow me on Twitter? Uh, of course. They hate me, right? Yes, they do. You it's, have quite the following. Of it's very followers. bad. You have Twitter haters? A lot of them. Oh, I, so I, like, I just got on to Twitter. Oh, you did? I did. Oh, I'm going to find you right now. What um, are you? At Smute1214. S-M- U-T-E. 1214? Yes. 1214? You got it. What is that? There you are. My right. college and my high school numbers. You have 29 followers. That's amazing. That's not. That's terrible, right? Horrible. Yeah, I just started oh, like a week ago. Boy. That's my middle guy. Look at that oh outfit. It's pretty sweet. Oh, my God. He's ridiculous. Yeah, Casey. Lover of college and, fr- and pro football, baseball, hockey, and hoop as well. Passionate about high-level quarterback play. Interesting take on life and our journey through it. Yep. I like that. Oh, followed by Chach, of course. Chach is the man. The man. No, I'm not taking a break. <laughs> we have to. We have Jeff Howe. Fine. Oh, Jeff's on now. He's coming up. He's going to call him. All I right, we'll Jeff. be back Jeff's with Jeff Howe. Uh, I think Scott I like Utrin Jeff. and Jen Royal here on Boston Herald Radio. He, you should like The online radio revolution is on. 100 million American listeners and counting. Make Boston Herald Radio your headquarters. UPS is hiring seasonal tractor trailer drivers. Class A CDL required. Work nights, home every day, earn $26 an hour. And UPS is also hiring many package delivery drivers near you. Full-time days, no commercial driver's license required. Training provided. Many positions are now available at UPS in Chelmsford and also throughout Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Apply now at upsjobs.com. That's upsjobs.com. UPS is an equal opportunity employer. Boston Herald Radio. Call or text with your opinion at 617-286-8818. Everything you're looking for, Ernie Bach Jr. Yeah. We've got it. Ernie Bach Jr. Yeah. Everything you're looking for. At Bach Honda, we have everything you're looking for. At one of our two great locations, Bach Honda on the Auto Mile, Route 1 in Norwood, or Bach Honda West in Westford, Mass. All Honda dealers claim to have the lowest prices, but to have the lowest prices, you must have the lowest cost. That's only natural. Unlike most dealers, we have no mortgages, saving us thousands of dollars a month, which we can pass on to you, our Honda customers. Two great Bach Honda locations, one legendary low Bach Honda price. For complete details, go to Bach.com. Bach Honda on the Auto Mile, Route 1 in Norwood, or Bach Honda West on Littleton Road in Westford, Mass. My name is Ernie Bach, Jr. Come on down. Come on, Ernie Bach, Jr. Yeah. We've got it. Ernie Bach, Jr. Everything you're looking for. Are you looking for a great deal on a new Subaru? Metro West Subaru on Route 9 East in Natick is your place to find them. They have the all-new redesigned 2014 Foresters. They're available now. They also have 0% financing on all leftover models. Metro West Subaru has the largest pre-owned Subaru inventory in the Metro Boston area with over 30 certified Subarus in stock. Check them out today. You won't be disappointed. Do what I did. Check out Metro West Subaru, Route 9 East Natick, and as always, expect the best at Metro West. Boston Herald Radio News. This is Katie Eastman, Jessica Hesse. I'm Erica Moore. Rachel Fox. Our newsroom is the entire city. on my microphone at least i have the right mic right christian i did a whole show a whole segment on right. this mic yeah it didn't work and people were like we can barely hear you're you talking to yourself and this one's like you're fine i hear you fine I it's hear all fine. good and then he's like wait a minute idiot you're on the wrong i think mic. he hears you in his sleep I, I, <laughs> christian most definitely people, most he people wakes do. up wakes up jen most <laughs> people do <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, Jeff Howe will be a little kinder to me than you two punks. Uh, Jeff Howe, wow. beat reporter here at the Herald for the Patriots. Hello, Jeffrey. 
Hello, Jen. How are you? I'm good. We're joined by uh, Scott Mutrin here, former quarterback from Boston College. So he's going to uh, put you in the hot seat as well. All right. Sounds good. All right. Where should we begin? Let's just start with, uh, I guess we're going to start with Denver and talk a little bit about the fact that uh, Peyton Manning coming in the middle of one of his best seasons, uh, especially after that neck injury two years ago, and of course, Wes Welker. Uh, what are your thoughts on Welker and whether or not he'll play on Sunday? I would fall off my chair if yep. Welker did not play. <laughs> I mean, he's had, he's dealt with so many injuries, mm -hmm. undiagnosed concussions, so on and so forth throughout his his career and you know the six years with the Patriots, he only missed three games. He's not going to miss this game. <laughs> I mean, this is this might be the biggest game of his career. So back out on the practice field today, that's a good sign. And, and again, I would be stunned if he couldn't pass that concussion test, whether it's a legitimate passing or a wink, wink type type of mm -hmm. deal. Jeff, uh, the Patriots secondary, obviously, tons of injuries this year. Uh, hopefully, going to get Steve Gregory back, even though he may be a one-armed bandit out there. Does that look like a possibility this week? It looks like a possibility. It's just it's hard to know for sure if it's going to happen. This is, uh, this is definitely one of those storylines that I think will develop more toward the end of the week. Uh, he, the good news is he's been out there practicing. Last time or last week, he was never out there. And for a guy with a thumb injury, I mean, you know, it's 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 a matter of will you continue to damage it even if you're out there with the club. And I think they knew early on in that week, since he was never even out there for conditioning purposes, that he was not part of the game plan. At least this week, the possibility exists. He said yesterday it was he still had to have several more conversations with the doctors to figure out if he could play. I think he was probably being a little strategic with his comments about it, his status and stuff like that. But right now, I mean, uh, the chance exists. I'm just not really sure how good or, or how bad it could possibly be. Keep Tlaib? Tlaib uh, sounded really optimistic question? yesterday. Oh, nice. That's yeah, <laughs> Tlaib really did sound optimistic about his chance yesterday. He said the head tightened up at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the game Monday night against the Panthers. That's why he wasn't out there. He tried to test it, but he was in a really good mood yesterday. He he said he was he was fine. Now, I mean, obviously guys lie. Tommy Kelly said he was fine after that Bengals game, and we never saw him again. So it's uh, but again, if you kind of you go by the way you're able to read certain people when you've dealt with them for a little while, it, Tlaib sounded uh, like there was a, a pretty good chance that he'd be out there. Jeff, the talk of the week, obviously everyone dwelling on the, the non-call in the end zone right there. How about the Patriots as a team? Obviously, have they moved past this? Is, do you sense any of that kind of still ruminating in there? Or are these guys totally focused on this on this Denver team and just have cut bait with that and moved on? Yeah, they've, they've put that thing in the past pretty quickly. I think a lot more quickly than they did with that Jets call at the end of that loss. What was it? Five, four weeks ago now or however long ago that was. It, there was there was still some clear animosity about the Jets' call uh, a day or two after that happened, but this uh, this latest one, I mean, they've they've shut down the talk really quickly. They didn't really want to get into it, and, and for good reason. I think I think the upcoming game has a lot to do with that too. And I think Bill Belichick. I don't think anybody in the locker room, obviously, nobody in the locker room is happy with the way it ended because it's. And it's almost impossible to find anybody who thinks that the ref made the right call except for the guy in charge of all the refs. And I think with how sketchy his response was, even he realizes that they screwed up. But the fact of the matter is you can be smart about it and move on, or you can be dumb about it and hold a grudge and have that affect you going into this week. They can't, have, they can't afford any more mistakes with with a team i mean they can't afford to lose this game really what it comes down to if they have any desire to get the number one seed and i don't think I mean, the number one seed is still somewhat of a long shot but they have uh, a good grasp on the potential to get the number two seed in the playoffs and, and if they can beat the broncos this week then again they keep themselves alive for that top playoff seed and home field advantage and if they don't beat the broncos then you're looking at a, a near certainty to have to beat them in denver in a couple of months so this game has a uh, serious playoff implications. They also don't want to drop seven and four and then be fighting with the uh, with with the Bengals and the Colts for a potential third and fourth seed too. So, I mean, that's 
this is where Bill Belichick is really good at, at keeping the locker room in check. Even though Belichick is still really salty about that call, too, you got to compartmentalize, and you have to prioritize what's important. And, and right now, moving on is the most important thing for the Patriots. Yeah, and as you say, moving on here, it's a, it's a good point. This is the time of the year the Patriots, you know, everyone's in the playoff race now. I mean, for all intents and purposes, besides three teams. These, this is usually the time of the year the Patriots kind of put that foot down the accelerator and start kind of making that push towards the second half of the year. Um, in that, how that success is kind of based on that. This offense has really, as they started to get personnel and people back, you can kind of see there's a little more comfortability, um, comfort level that these guys have. And the offense played a very good game against Carolina, I thought. You know, a couple unfortunate pe penalties. But this offense is really starting to kind of get its feet underneath them and start to play really well. Yeah, I agree completely. This offense looks like they could... Uh, knock on wood for them anyway in terms of injuries and avoiding any more of that fate. They really could make a charge here in the second half. They could be one of the two or three best offenses going into the playoffs if everybody stays healthy because Gronkowski looks like Gronkowski again and has for a few weeks. Shane Vereen looked really good in his first game back. Steven Ridley, I think, although that, that fumble was was a, a killer, essentially. It's the, the number one mistake that they had against the Panthers, I think, Ridley was the, the biggest reason why they lost the game against the Panthers. But Ridley is running very well, and Dawson is coming along a lot better. He looks better than maybe any rookie who's ever played with Tom Brady, and going all the way back to Deion Branch. So there are a lot of reasons to like what is happening with this offense. I'm not sure Danny Amendola is ever going to get back to full strength, but as long as he can be a, a counted-on complementary piece, I mean, you're still talking about, what, four, five, six different weapons, if you count the running backs, too, who can be real assets for Tom Brady. And this has to be the strength of their team going down the stretch here and into the playoffs solely because of the, the injuries and the guys that they know for sure will not be back on defense. Yeah. I was just going to say, speaking of injuries, uh, nice job with the Alfonso Dennard story, uh, being the first to report that he won't play this week and actually had some surgery and will be out for the next few weeks. T tell us about what you know about that situation. Well, I don't know for sure about the surgery. I wasn't able to report any of that. Oh, you suck, I, Jeff Howe. Come on. Well, I know. I know. <laughs> My God. So, uh, just when you thought you were a half ass report. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's kidding. only half if the surgery is, in, in fact, true. Just kidding. So, we love you, Jeff. You're our hero here at the Herald. <laughs> well, no, I mean, the, the reason why I say that, that I don't know if the surgery happened, is because, I mean, how many people do you know of who had knee surgeries and then three days later are able to do a backpedal out of nearly a squat position? I mean, that's... Uh, no. I, I am very iffy on that, and I don't like to call out other reports, but... Uh, media I, fight! Media fight! Media fight! Yeah. There's, there's a reason I've to believe that surgery may not have actually happened. So, uh, again, I can't report that it did, and who knows? Maybe I'm missing that part of the story, and, and that's perfectly possible. But, again, if he had his surgery, we saw him on Friday at practice, and then hadn't seen him Saturday, Sunday, basically Saturday through yesterday when he came back to practice so the earliest he could have had it was friday night and if he did that means five days later he was doing a back pedal from again essentially like a squat position and he wasn't moving well but mm -hmm. i just and i'm not like a veteran of knee surgeries here or anything thankfully but yes. i just find it very very uh odd that a guy would be able to uh be able to pull off something like what, that does the team not disclose information when a player has surgery no, just not put the injury on the way. I, yeah. there was, I mean, if you want to talk about a, a great example, uh, Vince Wilfork's wife, Bianca, tweeted out a photo of Vince in the hospital bed after he had his uh, Achilles surgery early this season, and Bill Belichick still wouldn't uh, say that he had surgery. <laughs> so, God. I mean, that's, that's I love what it. you're I just at, love right? him. His post game, the, his post game conferences after oh, losses God. are absolutely to me but treasure. That, I love watching them. I know you guys one, hate him as that reporters. That last one hurt me. Yeah, the last one hurt but me. They're great, Jeff. You know, you, you mentioned this about Ridley. How much uh, is the concern of his holding on to the ball here? I mean, there's a difference when he's running the ball back there. There are different offense when Stephen Ridley's on in the field. Are, are they going to be willing to look past this and kind of like? 
you know, hold your breath every time he runs the ball? If he's going to hold on to it this time, or are they just going to leave him on the sidelines? You know, I, I think, and this is, I think this is a big story only because of the way Bill Belichick, or I shouldn't say only, but I mean, the, the fumble against the Bills in the season opener was inexcusable because he showed no effort to get back up and chase down the guy as he ran toward the, toward the end zone. The fumble, uh, on, against the Panthers was huge because essentially it cost the Patri- Patriots a chance at a, a minimum of three points and then uh, the chance to kick the game-winning field goal rather than having to go for a touchdown against the Panthers late in the fourth quarter there. So uh, those two were inexcusable, and I'm not trying to, uh, to defend him for those fumbles, but I don't think this story would be as big if Bill Belichick wasn't so public about his benching of Stephen Ridley. And, I mean, he had a, a fumble in the playoffs last year when he was knocked out cold and was probably unconscious before even he, he hit the ground. So uh, he's had he's had some fumbles, but if you compare his fumble rate, and I haven't looked up the numbers in, in at least a month or so, but every time I have, his fumble rate is right there in line, if not better than guys like Adrian Peterson and some of the best runners in the NFL. And again, I'm not calling him or comparing his style to Adrian Peterson. He's not in that ballpark whatsoever. But it just goes to show you, the guy put the ball on the ground, and as Ridley showed in that Steelers game, when he's confident, when he knows he's not running tentatively because, uh, you know, I might fumble here, maybe I shouldn't lower my shoulder, maybe I shouldn't do this, I'm afraid to get benched, I don't know if I put the ball on the ground, if I'm ever going to see it again, because the fumble ended his, his rookie season, too. I mean, he didn't, get a, he didn't get a carry for like a game and a half. So yeah. it was, uh, I, I, but what I'm getting at is, he came back after the Patriots said, you know what, you put the ball on the ground because Paul Amalo ripped it out of your hands. We're going to give you another chance. And he rewarded him. He had the majority of his, his yards after the fumble, and he ran well. And he ran maybe as well as he had at any point, any other point this season. So I, I think they have to just keep going back to him unless it, 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 this becomes a, a real trend. And, I mean, something that has not been, I think, overblown by Belichick. If he puts the ball on the ground this week and then, they go back to him the, the week after, and he puts it on the ground again. Then you have to really consider the, the, the carries that you're going to give him. But he, uh, I've always thought they've, uh, not that I'm in the minority here, but I've always thought that they've looked a lot better when Ridley is getting consistent carries as opposed to Ridley for a series and then sit him down for a couple series or whatever. I just think he, he's their best asset especially between the tackles. And now the Marines back, they have to use their guys a little bit differently. Yeah, but Ridley's a, a very much... you got to stick with him. Yeah, I think he's a... He, like you said, he's a rhythm back. The more of a rhythm that he yeah. gets, the you can you can see the confidence and you can see how uh, with him moving there, he just he just he gets better as he kind of... As, as the game wears on that way. Now, yeah, Denver way. coming in this... It. Denver, a huge game. You know, just the Welker thing, Manning, Brady, all this Sunday night game. Broncos have a very good pass rush. Do you think the um, the really is going to be a huge part of this game plan because they can, you know, they have been a little susceptible to the run and with the ability to, you know, Tom's been sacked a lot this year. The ability for the the, the Broncos to get up the field and get after the passer, they're going to have to rely on Ridley a lot in this game. Yeah, they have to, mostly because they have to be really efficient this week, and that has a lot of different areas. That, a lot of different department compartments to it in that you kind of want to do to the Broncos what the Panthers did to the Patriots on Monday night, have sustainable drives, don't make mistakes, convert on third down. And it's obviously a lot easier said than done, especially on a Thursday. But yeah. it's, it's an area where the Patriots need to be successful. And I always kind of laugh when stuff like this is brought up because it's like, oh, well, you can't you score too quick. I mean, uh, a t- scoring a touchdown is not usually a bad thing, but I right. think this week, because of the way Patriots secondary is so banged up, the offense really has to be complementary to the defense, and they have to sustain those drives. And, and a lot of that has to come from the running game, and they've been really balanced in terms of the, the run-to-pass ratio over the last three games, and, and if it's it, and that has helped their offense look as good as they have at any point this season. That can't be overlooked either. So, uh yeah, I mean that's. Yeah, I think that's. You're, you're, you made a good point there. Is that 
that this, it's sad that this 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 Gronk gate has gone on as it was because that was such a well played game against Carolina. The two hard teams, you know that that's what people should be talking about. The the Patriots are very efficient on offense. Carolina was very efficient. It was a physical game. Um, it, it was one of the better games that I've seen the Patriots play in a while. And you know, obviously the loss doesn't help, but that game was a quick, efficient game. I mean, they were struggling to get timeouts in there because there was just it was just had such a good offensive rhythm. Yeah, absolutely. It was really well played by both teams, just like you said. And offensively, I mean, the Patriots only had seven possessions. They averaged 13 a game in their first nine, but they, they played well. They had at least eight offensive plays on all of, and on every single one of their possessions. I mean, the, the difference in the game was the Ridley fumble, the Mankins personal foul that erased a possible touchdown drive, and then a, a sack that uh, Brady took, I think, on the first possession that took him out of a potential field goal range. So, I mean, it, you look at maybe three plays there. I mean, Belichick says it all the time. Games always come down to just a handful of plays. Yeah. I really think those were the three plays. Other than that, the Patriots played a good game. I mean, they only scored 20 points, but efficiency was very key for them. And if they can carry that over this week to the Broncos game, they're going to have every. They'll have a great shot to, to come out with a victory. And you think they will? I uh, man, put I'm you on the spot, part. man. Put you on the spot. Yeah. Got to do it. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's tough. I, I'm I'm gonna steer. I'm gonna stay away from the prediction today. Maybe maybe <sighs> you can squeeze one out of me later. You're gonna let him do that. Today, You're gonna let him go pop out on that. Jen? Yeah, he's not big on predictions. You, you know, it's because everybody just likes to tell me how wrong I am. Or how so dumb what? I that's what second. I'll, yeah, I'll that's great. Plenty of other opportunities to, to call me that, but I, it's uh, and I, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's. Why should I? You know what? I don't know. I don't know who's going to win the game. That's my prediction. Nice. I have absolutely no idea. Nice. That's just it. Say, just Fight say us it back. could go either yeah. way. Yep. My answer is tails. always yeah. it could go either way. Heads or tails. There you go. I agree. The game could absolutely go either way. People ask me to to uh, to do that with the World Series. I was like, you know what? This is the World Series. They're the two best teams. It could go either way. Come on. That, that was my answer. All right. Jeff Howe, our beat reporter here at the Herald for the Patriots. Take care, Jeff. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for your time. Right. We'll talk to you Have soon. A good night, guys. All right, you too. Well, isn't he Smarty Pants? He's great. Smarty He's Pants. He's great. I've, I've talked to him a couple Love times. Love Smarty He's Pants. Great. All right, Scott Mutrin and Jen Royal here at Boston Herald Radio. We'll be back with you after this short break. We're in the final stretch. The online radio revolution is on. 100 million American listeners and counting. Make Boston Herald Radio your headquarters. The year is almost over, but 495 Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram is going out big. It's the Big Finish event. Big savings, big selection, big finish. Choose from over 100 new Rams in stock. Save up to $10,000 on a new Ram 1500 Crew Cab 4x4. Big savings, big selection. Don't miss the Big Finish event. See all our low and upfront pricing online at 495ram.com or visit us at 495 Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Lowell. Boston Herald Radio News. This is Katie Eastman, Jessica Hess. I'm Eric Moore. Rachel Fox. Our newsroom is the entire city. Todd Pressman here on the Boston Herald web desk. From the breaking news bar, a Danvers High School freshman was indicted on charges of murder, rape, and armed robbery in the killing of a beloved math teacher at that town's high school. The Essex County Grand Jury... This afternoon, handed down indictments against 14-year-old Philip Chisholm in the October 23 murder of Colleen Ritzer. No further details were released in the case. A UMass Dartmouth freshman today posted bail after he was charged with leaving the scene of a fatal accident. 18-year-old Eric Megna allegedly struck Michael Dutra, father of two, on October 11 in Middleborough and then drove to his family's home in New Hampshire, according to prosecutors. Megna was released today on $10,000 cash bail. For the latest on these and other stories, go to bostonherald.com, check out our free sports and news apps, or pick up a copy of today's Herald. I'm Todd Pressman, and that's the Boston Herald Web Traffic Report. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark Eisenthal. Here's my forecast for Boston overnight. Clouding up, not cold. It'll be 35 to 43. And tomorrow, we cool for the approaches with a lot of clouds. Mild, 48 to 54, maybe a shower, a sprinkle. And on Saturday, the Arctic air starts to come in here during the afternoon with an increasing northwest wind. Temperatures fall back into the 30s. Could be a flurry or a snow squall. Bitter cold air with strong winds for Saturday night and Sunday. For more weather, go to heraldweather.com. For Boston Herald Radio, I'm Mark Resenthal. 
more leads, more meetings, and more satisfied customers. You want that, and we can help. I'm Butch Stearns from the Pulse Network. We help companies grow their business through their website with content marketing. Build a strong online presence by humanizing your brand and telling better stories. When you create, curate, and distribute compelling content, you'll get searched by more of the right people. Let's talk about how content marketing can work for you. Just go to thepulsenetwork.com slash herald. That's thepulsenetwork.com slash herald to learn more. Everything you're looking for. Ernie Bach Jr. Yeah. Yeah. We've got it. Ernie Bach Jr. Everything you're looking for. Bach Toyota on the Auto Mile Route 1 in Norwood. All Toyota dealers claim to have the lowest prices, but to have the lowest prices, you must have the lowest cost. That's only natural. Unlike most dealers, we have no mortgages, saving us thousands of dollars a month, which we can pass on to you, our Toyota customers. Choose from hundreds of new and certified pre-owned vehicles online at BachToyota.com. At Bach Toyota, we have everything you're looking for, all at legendary low Bach Toyota prices. Bach Toyota on the Auto Mile Route 1 in Norwood. My name is Ernie Bach Jr., Come on down. There's a list of people waiting to claim their share of over $2 billion in unclaimed property, like forgotten bank accounts, stock certificates, payroll and refund checks, or insurance proceeds. One in ten people have unclaimed property and don't even know it. Find out if you're on the list. Visit findmassmoney.com or call the Mass State Treasury 1-888-344-MASS. Find yours and claim your share. Today's the day. It's Sleepy's One Day Mattress Sale. Get every Simmons mattress on sale. With Beauty Sleep Queen sets as low as $299. Save 50% on the all new Phenom Collection. Designed with new air cool memory foam to keep you comfortably cool all night long. Plus free delivery. A one day sale this good only comes along today. Sleepies, the mattress professionals, making the world a better place to sleep. Michael Graham, 12 to 3. And Sports Town with Johnny Aprell and Jen Royal now. Boston Herald Radio. All right. Final segment here on Boston Herald Radio. Yes. I'm joined by the bald, the bearded, the tattooless. That's right. Scott no Mutrin. Wow, oh, you almost batted a thousand there, buddy. Can't be perfect, I guess. Yeah, no, you can't. And strive to achieve it, though. Well, you could. You could get some tattoos, and then you'd be perfect. <laughs> How's that? There we go. That's something right, to strive for. Two papers in my hand. Richie Incognito watch Dolphins win with teammate Mike Pouncey. Misses football to death. Okay, so that's the newest here. Yeah. And then here's another one. Adrian Peterson says he isn't bothered when teammates use the N-word, claims crazier things are said in locker rooms. That's a winner. Where should we begin? I would start. Let's start with that one. I mean, right. has having, unlike, you know, baseball guys, you, like as you see, it's, it's you know, football is it's the biggest roster out of all the professional sports. So you have a massive different dynamics running through a football locker room because you, with different skill sets, different people, different socioeconomic backgrounds, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in a football locker room and things that are said that would, if there was like the, someone snuck in with a microphone and that got aired, like the world would be like absolutely mortified. I mean, there's I'm just, sure. yeah, it's just stuff just, just gets said. It's you, you're, you're, you're a bunch of dudes, yeah, a bunch of testosterone. Yep. Jacked up. Got the, the you're the, around the, each other all the time. Right. Family. Things are right. said. Things, uh, you know, you, you rip on guys, you 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 spend so much time with them. You get to. Things rub you the wrong way. You say certain things. It's just, it doesn't surprise me that Adrian Peters says, I think it's, um, you know, Charles Barkley made some interesting comments, I think, last week about the use of, of the N-word and how he didn't, you know, he used it. He didn't mind it. He was saying that white, white America was telling him, shouldn't be telling him right. what, what he should say. It was, it's an interesting spin on it. It's just, when you're in a locker room, there are things that are said there that are meant to stay there. Just like if you're in an office, Which things are meant to Which is why do there. you feel 
all the dolphins are upset at Richie and Cog- uh, are upset at uh, Martin and not Incognito. At, you know, I said this from the beginning uh, on the Martin thing. I said that he, you break us. You know, everyone's like, yeah. "Well, it's a code." You know, kind of, everyone gets like the few good men code. I hate your code, that's, right? That's what I've been saying. Right. But do you know why they they harassed uh, William Santiago? Yeah. Because he went he, outside he of the, the group. Chain of command. Yes. Yes. So that's what happened. They killed them, but... Well, yeah, a little, little rash, but that, you know, it's a perfect example of that. You, you're, the rules are there to, to be followed. And there's unwritten rules that go on there, and you're not supposed to... You trust, like we said in football, you have to trust the other 10 guys that you're in the huddle with, that they're going to get your back, you'll get theirs. And if someone does that, and you break that trust, and you go outside of that, it's, it's, it's damning, it's hurtful, and... There are things said there that in the locker room that are hurtful as well, but that's because people's livelihood. This is a job for them, and they want to win, and all these other things. And if someone's preventing them from that, you know, they do things that are you know probably outside the norm of what is acceptable in, in normal social social outlets. But, but I think the question is, what is acceptable, and what is above the norm? But, well, it's I mean, they're all it's all. Once you're in the closed doors, you're mm-hmm. safe. It's your safe place, but right? I'll, well, yes, should be. But behind closed doors, don't you kind of put um, what's the word? You you kind of put a, a a ceiling on how much. Absolutely. I mean, the line was crossed, no right. doubt about it. I mean, there's the but the, the golden saying, rule, though. It's the golden rule: treat others as you'd like but, to be treated. But what the dolphins are saying is the line wasn't crossed because we right. cross lines in this room. Right. Well, that I mean, that's the the conundrum there, right? Yeah. So wait, there are lines, but there aren't but lines. There aren't. But it's it's more of that. Th- there should have been more leadership that said either, if they saw Richie Incognito pushing it too far, it should have been stopped, right? Right. But when you hear all the other co- uh, the co- the other teammates commenting that they didn't think that he had gone too far, either that that is an accepted thing. This is going to get blown. It's gotten majorly blown it's out of proportion. And, and the Dolphins have done a poor job as an organization mm-hmm. of squelching this fire. Right. You know, if this happened in, in, in the Patriots locker room, you know, like, look at Bill Belichick, they address it once, we will not address it again. Right. Like the Hernandez thing, never heard about it again. Mm-hmm. Address it once, we're not going to address it. These guys, and then when the players sticking up for each other and they, they can't help but commenting on this stuff, they got to... It's just it's a it's a failure as an organization, and if Richie Incognito crossed lines and did certain things that he was not supposed to do and should have been pulled back by some of the people there, he is definitely at fault for this. Well, the first day it happened, we had uh, our good friend Courtney Fallon, who covers the Dolphins for NBC down in down in Miami. She came out of the locker room and called us right away, and she was like, "You're not going to believe this. Nobody is on Martin's side. Yeah, they are all pissed off." At sure. Martin. Yeah, you could see that. I mean, they're, the Dolphins, are they're, the players now are, are doing a better job of, are, are, are doing a good job of not basically showing their disappointment in Jonathan Martin. But it's, it's evident that it's there in their, in their tapered comments that they've made. It's you, going outside that and, have, you know, your agent should address it with the GM if it's that big of a problem. If Jonathan Martin had a, a psychological issue that was bothering him, he needed to, he needed to address the Dolphins' management about that and then I was like listen I have an Cor- issue that's I have Courtney an said. issue right that's what Courtney and said. he should have addressed it that way and if the Dolphins and we don't know this there I, I haven't heard anything to the contrary who knows if Je- and if Jeff Ireland either said that he needs to punch him or he ignored this fact and and let it go on then you know then you have to go to a plan b but it doesn't seem it's it kind of seems that they did ready fire aim sort of thing and didn't really expect the blowback that has come out of it and then you know, you get the whole, you. how can another teammate ever trust you again once you've done that? And it's it's fair or not, it's just that that's the, that's the label that's going to be there. So let me ask you this, having obviously been a football player, um, what if you did go to the coaches? Right. I have to sneeze. Ready? Water, watermelon, cantaloupe. There you go. Ooh. Three. Did anybody hear me? No, I didn't. I hit the cough button. It works. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Amazing so what if you this... did go to the coaches? Right. Then what? What if they found out you went to the coaches? Now are you a tattletale? Well, no. I mean, you, you kind of, it depends on how you do it. If you say to the guy, hey, enough, and he keeps doing it, and then you're just like, hey, you know, position coach, having a little issue, just guy, just have this guy get off my back. There's a way to go. About it. And it would, it would be done. It should be. You're not a tattletale for doing it because... If that's usually a resort after you've man to man gone up to this guy and be like, "Hey, enough, Why enough, he? enough." Who I don't know, did he? Apparently it's, it's gray. not. Well, it's very oh, gray. Okay. 
Well, well he sent back he would, text messages. These guys texted all the but time. But don't you think he would have said to the public, listen, I did ask him to stop and he didn't? Well, I haven't heard that. Right, that's so what I'm saying. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's That thing is just... It's just, just poor execution from everyone involved. All right. So here's Adrian Peterson saying he's not bothered when teammates use the N-word. But my question is this. Are black people using the N-word or are white people using the N-word? Um, that, that's, that's a good question. Oh, here um, we go. It seems like... There are a couple guys I could use myself as an example that might throw that out there that's not African American and I don't take it personally because I know where it comes from. So I got into this conversation with, with black teammates. And? And I said, you know, what's the difference? You know, I'm like, you guys say it. It's an offensive word, right? It's an offensive word. How can you say that? Right. And I'm like, well, it's not because it's not the E-R. It's the A-H. A. Right. So it's like, that's like saying that's like you're like they brothers, don't say what up, bro. They say what up, bro. Yeah. But it's like we're buddies. We're, we're, we're brothers. Or I'm like, so we're buddies. We're brothers. Can I say it? And they're like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. I'm like, you guys, you guys are reverse racism. You know? Right. And they're just like, yeah, you can't do because you're white. Some guys, you know, some guys can and some guys can't. You got to know the lines. It's just like knowing people, right? Some people you can go up to, like I'm sure like some of your little girlfriends, you go up and be like, what's up, B.I.? You know what I mean? That's exactly then, what I said. Well, what up, bro? Yeah, exactly. You don't say like to the to one of your girlfriends. Like, right. But like there's another girl, if you say that too, she'd be like, Jen, don't say that to me. It's offensive. I don't like it. Okay, okay here. now here, actually, this is actually I'm not going to say what this is, is in con what the, what the context is of this tweet. Right. But I'm no, one, of my, one of my girlfriends texted me this the other day, the other day, and they said, hey, Jen, I know I'm hard on you when it comes, it comes to, to the, the belief situation, situation. But, I just, but I just want what's best, best for you. I know this, I know this stuff, stuff is when tough when it comes to random emotions. Emotion. I just wanted to say, I'm, say I'm here for you, and I hope and I you hope have you taken my name and comments the wrong way. Okay, okay. But I wrote back, I wrote back, and said, oh, you didn't, you, you, I said, I didn't, I didn't give you, you giving me a hard, a hard time, I thought, I thought, I thought, trust me, you didn't have to say anything. Right, right. So, 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 you just, just know, you know, you just know, I could not believe that she thought for one second that I would, I would be upset at her giving me crap. Because maybe she knows she knows she knows. But that's what I'm saying, so, so, that's exactly it. So, so, you would think at one point, point, Richie and Jane, again, for guys, right. could right. say, listen, I hope you don't enjoy around here. Right. It's, you can't, can't, people are, every Sometimes person is different, have though, to right? Sure. Well, every person's different, right? We're all snowflakes, right? <laughs> We're all different people. We all different. Everyone has different push push points that, like, that drive them crazy. Mm -hmm. It's it's about you figuring that out as a human being and finding that out. And you can sense, you get to know, you spend a lot of time in the locker room. And if you can see a guy pulling back or, you know, Fighting back, and you you know that your buttons have been pushed. You know as a you man, know you know as a you man, know as a human I know, but you know as a man, you, you know, know as, as a man that it has to be. Right. You have to address it. You know as a human being. Right. Yeah. Now another one of my girlfriends, I had a horrible breakup this year. It wasn't even horrible, and I told her exactly how I felt. You ready? Yeah. You want to know what I said to her? You're gonna feel you're gonna feel a lot better in six months. I promise you. Yeah. And now look at you. She hates me. Really? She hasn't talked to me in five months. And she's she's still not broke. She's she's they're the one that up. broke up. They're broken up. Right. She was crying every day. Really. Yeah. And I said you are going to feel she's so. Watching much. how to lose a guy in ten days on the couch in <laughs> right. the snuggies. I said you're. Uh, by the way, one of my only my chick flicks. Chick that flick. I, my good. wife bought that for me. I it's like cute. it. Yeah, it's a good movie. I said you're going to feel. I promise you, you're going to feel so much better in six months. I promise you, you're going no to you're going to be happier without it's him. Just, but it's just, then nobody, the same thing. Nobody is just wants like, to hear it. No, no one wants to hear. It. No one want, No guy wants to hear his girlfriend's cheating on them. And nobody then, wants and to. And hear everyone it. hates his girlfriend, but and then they need to break up with it. But how come you don't want to hear? Because they always blame the guys. That you're going to be happier because no you're crying all the time now. No one wants to hear that. Everyone, everyone likes the pity part. Everyone and likes. The you know what my part girlfriend said? We like the pain. My girlfriends were like, "Oh, she just wants you to tell her that everything's going to be fine, and you're going to get back. They're going to get back together." I go, "What? So she can cry again?" Yeah, it's the pain. <sighs> it's called being a friend. Yeah, honesty. Such a Best lonely policy. word. But again, and, and, and but back to what you said. Everybody's different. Because here's my friend Jessica saying. God, I hope to God I didn't offend you. And it's like, no, but thank you for like, saying Jess, that. Take off the sensitive pants here. <laughs> right. All right, sensitive pants here. Let's go. Right. Let's put the barriers put down. Put your skirt and back on. Right, exactly. Got them. Get the high boots on and let's go. 
Let's go to Empire and have a couple drinks exactly. and let's have which, some Razzatini. Which we did do. Which oh my we God, I do. forgot to speak in Razzatini. I went to this is one last meter story. We're going to end on this when We were oh in down God, in El Paso. He ordered a raspberry did margarita. He it? No, he didn't raspberry margarita. I have a picture of it. I may have deleted it. He but, didn't finish it. You know, it was just, it was. He got it. It looked like he ordered it off the kids menu. Oh my god, we went the out to the. You girls are gonna get your Razzatini's apple floaters or whatever oh, over there. We don't drink like that. Yeah, you do. All right. Well, we went to Del Frisco's for dinner once, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna have a couple of m- drinks. I'm gonna get you know, you know, you know, meet her. I'm gonna, oh yeah. I'm gonna get my drink on." <laughs> He ordered this fruity martini with had 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 a swirl like lemon rind in it. <sighs> two sips, two sips. And you're doing, and you got like you got a bud. I had you got four a before he finished the one. So you had what? You had like bud bottle with a with a turkey no, chaser. No, I, I think I had dirty martinis, but he was Uh-oh. like, oh, I don't want to drink martinis. No, no, I don't like them. I love olives. I don't like olives. I, I hate them. Olives. So he was just like, "How do you do that?" I'm like, "You just swallow it." You open your what mouth, do you mean? and swallow. Oh, the steak was too rare for him. He, I mean, it was. It was. We love you, meat. Enjoy the BC game tonight. Like Start in an hour in New York. It was like a disaster. UConn. The whole thing. I was like, "Does anyone ever take you to nice places?" Yeah. Do you order a Happy Meal at McDonald's? I, I bet he does. And complain when you get the wrong him. toy at the bottom of the box. By the way, the speaking box. of McDonald's, we got sixty dollars at McDonald's last night, and when we a bunch of old football guys, like I 60 said, sixty bucks. Yeah, well, we had all met out Did for you our drive friend's through? funeral. Well, here's the thing: so McDonald's is right next to the hotel, okay. right? And the the place that we tried to get food was closed, okay. which they said they were open. So m- there's nothing like getting a bunch of big angry. Former football players that are expecting food and not getting it, right? After they just went through an emotional funeral process. And I'm like, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take care of this, right. guys. I'll, right. I'm the leader. I'll take right. care of this. Put on my leaderman hat and I <laughs> go outside looking for food, McDonald's, and I go to walk in and it's closed. So it's only the drive thru's open. Oh, so what do no. I do? I walk through the drive thru. No, you yes, didn't. Did. And yes, what did, did you say? I walked up Wait, does to it the pick window. Up? Does it pick up that someone's there? No, I, w- I didn't weigh enough, so I was sta- right. So I was jumping. Okay. I was jumping <laughs> at first to try. So I'm wearing a suit. I'm wearing a suit and a ba- and a black ski hat, and I'm jumping to try to get the thing to go off, and it's not. So then I walk up and uh, I walk up. I walk up to get on there, and, and you then, knock on it. What do you do? Yeah, and uh, and then I did, and then I ordered, and then we had to go back because Why? it wasn't enough food. And oh then, so we got God. like the first one was like a twenty-two dollar bring- order, Where and then we got forty the bucks to? to the hotel room. Only twenty-two dollars. Well, dude, I got like the double cheeseburgers and the dollar McChickens, dollar. and the, yeah, yeah, so you get all those, which you think would be enough. Wolf down, got to go back. You we go back. back for the forty-dollar round. That time we see a guy, this poor gentleman, and whoever you are, if you're in New Jersey listening <laughs> to this radio show, we go up to him like, "Hey, buddy, we'll buy your McDonald's if you just go through and order our food." Why? Because it was just, it just I didn't, we didn't want to go through the process again. So we ordered another it and ordered his food. He got like seven McChickens, by the way, with cheese. His head cheese. That is and hilarious. Apple pies. Oh my god! And then he so just what, seven then his guys. His car drove up and he gave it to you. Well, we just, we walked with him outside, told <laughs> him what our order was. Like we were outside and then we ordered it. And then, so my the two guys, Scott and Danny, who took mm-hmm. the naked pictures of me. Yeah, who we love. W- were sleeping. And I was just feeding Scott them. Scott and Danny, can yeah. you send Fe- me those numbers, yeah. <laughs> those pictures? And they were feeding, they were, uh, I was feeding them like the different foods. Yeah. This, that they were like eyes closed as I'm like mashing food hilarious. in their mouth. And they're eating and all this McDonald's. And did the women eat McDonald's? I there weren't it. any, the, oh, very, uh, only a couple guys brought their wives um, and they weren't at our hotel. There was only, there was like seven of mm. us that were there. Where do you live here? I live in Norwell, in the South Shore. Do you have any single friends here? Why don't you hook them uh, up I have with, one. Why don't you hook them up with all my girlfriends? Uh, he's my one single friend. Is he's divorced? He's he's nuts. What but you maybe mean? you does might like have, him. Does he have tattoos? I think so. But he's not bald. How old is he? Forty. Does he have kids? Two? Nope. Where does he live? Beacon Hill. What does he do? Same thing I do in finance. Huh? What's his name? Sean. S H A W N or S E A N. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Who? There we go. That's a nice. That's Is he a, nice a former team. football player? He did. He played. I think he played Division three football. Was he the kicker? No. Okay, I good. did. I mean, you know, you obviously. We, this is our first time that we met. Yes. So you don't. You don't know my. I'm not a big kicker guy. I already heard you say. You had I know, kickers. but that's so. You said you thought they were wusses and they're not really football players. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. Much. <laughs> Just pretty much. Well, I actually, okay. to be honest with you, I thought kickers were soccer players. They that just joined the football are. team. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Much. 
Pretty much. I, I'm not, yeah, just the kicker guy. All right, we can go now. So we can hear about this guy, Sean. All right, well, this was He fun. owes me for this, by the way, because if he gets hooked up with that, then he, he should really give me a lot of money, right? Really? I don't know. It's a good question, but I mean, you think I'm a it's good, not easy. You think I'm a good catch, huh? It's, well, yeah, you and all Woo! your friends. You know, he's got his choice to pick from. He's that got five is, of you. That is right? very true. He's got that five is of you very guys. true. He can pick. He can pick. So five of you. They just, he's just got to get by the enforcer. I am the enforcer. the enforcer. I would love to like be. A, I would love to kind of just peek out and like see your crew in full effect. Just come out with us. Maybe I will. Just come Once. out with us. I think I'd laugh. It's highly, you guys would laugh. highly entertaining. I can only imagine. You don't even know what goes down. Stuff gets lost. Apartments almost get burned down. Uh, we lose keys. We lose clothes. We end up in VIP sections. We end up on the floor. We trip. We fall. Yes, we yeah, throw yeah. up. We eat too much. We get free food. We don't have to pay bills. We end up with the Bruins. It's we nice end up with the Red girls. Sox. We, we, it's it's nice it's being all, girls. Something guys, always happens. Guys always make it sound like it's so hard. I mean, we it's hard to, getting ready because you have to get all dressed up and We stuff went like to this that, one but. place that was so horrendous and we got inside. It was like a $20 cover charge. See, each. I don't do that. No, we don't either because we, because we just think it's, it's a scam yeah i don't do like it. what's the point so we Lines get inside it charges. was so horrendous and we actually all cuddled up we got together huddled up we were like all right we need an excuse um all right, i was like you're pregnant so let's nice. just say that you're pregnant and this is not the proper environment for us we were at the, we're at the wrong place we're going to try to get a refund and it worked like we all there's always a story i was like listen my it friend works for you guys my friend is five months pregnant we thought we didn't think this was a club it's just not a good nice. there's no seats for her like you know can we get a refund oh yeah sure of course you know I, terrible yeah there's, there's always a way around i things. am not a cover charge guy i'm not oh, a line God, guy yeah. i'm past where that. does the I'm, money go i'm a, in the pocket i used to work at dc Who, buchanan it's so i used to put oh in my pocket. god do you know jason Fody? uh no no he's like i'm no. older oh that's true you're my age it's been a while yeah i know but it's been a while since i worked at daisy i would think since you're married with 90 kids all right <laughs> scott mutrin thank you my pleasure jen it was do really nice to meet you Thursday? no just I try to help meet her out when he's, he's gone. All right. So when he's gone next time doing all this basketball stuff, I'll come in and hang out with you if you I want. I love it. I love it. Amazing. We could have like confessions. That's what it was. It was like. It was, it was actually. Like, we could call it Sports Town Confessions. I like How it. How does that sound? As long as uh, the right, the wrong people aren't listening. Well, it seems that they are, right? <laughs> it does. All right. We're done. Back here tomorrow. It's me and Chris Villani, 3 to 6. Sports Town, Boston Herald Radio. Because human genius has now destroyed the impediment of the terrestrial radio. Boston Herald Radio. Boston Herald Radio. Are you looking for a great deal on a new Subaru? Metro S Subaru on Route 9 East in Natick is your place to find them. They have the all-new redesigned 2014 Foresters. They're available now. They also have 0% financing on all leftover models. Metro 